played one game here, but the San Francisco Demons have already captured the imagination of Bay Area sports fans. And today, from picturesque Pac Bell Park, the Demons are back home, hoping to send Las Vegas packing like a dejected gambler. A Western showdown battle for first. It's the Las Vegas Outlaws and the San Francisco Demons. Please welcome your San Francisco Demons. around with some wimpy coin toss. We do it the right way. We beat the tar out of each other for it. It's called the scramble, and the rules are there ain't no rules. For the visiting Las Vegas Outlaws, he's a safety who likes to knit then poke himself with the needles because it makes him tough. Number 28, Jamal Williams. And for the home team, San Francisco Demons, he says he hate me's right. We all do hate him. Halfback, number 23, Brandon Young. All right, men, do your stuff. All right, gentlemen, these are your instructions. You'll line up on each side of me. On my whistle, you'll sprint to the football. It's been placed on the 50-yard line. Whoever secures possession of the football will have first choice of options to start the game for your team. And the first choice of any options should there be an overtime. You understand? Put your helmets on. Line up. Williams this year undefeated on the scramble at 3-0 in the white for visiting Las Vegas. Jamel Williams of Las Vegas, although it took a little while to figure out if he'd still be undefeated. Well, I'll tell you what, he, he got a slow start off the off the whistle, but his outright speed, watch him catch up and pass the demon commander. Then the ball comes loose, and some, it's basically wrestling to find out where that ball went. So oh, Las Vegas will get the option to kick or receive. Good everybody, welcome to the XFL at TNN. Craig Benavini, Big Bob Golick, big matchup today. Western Division, both teams are two and one. One thing you gotta like about the Demons, Bob, refreshing style. Mm. Their head coach, Jim Skipper, says, forget about balance. I don't care about run, pass, run. We want to score points. They're led by perhaps the best quarterback in the XFL. And Mike Pulaski, his best completion percentage, six touchdowns, although they have only been able to average 14 points a game. They've been moving the field ball up and down the field. But his problem, Bob, is the defense of Las Vegas. They've not allowed a touchdown this year. They're exactly right. And when you're only averaging 14 points a game coming up against a defense like this that won't let anybody in the end zone, there's going to be some battling going on between the goal lines. Las Vegas on offense, they've been really decimated by injuries. They're now working on their fourth quarterback, and this is the guy that got the call a week ago. He was at Stanford in a master's mm -hmm. program. Mark Green will take the snap today. You know what? I can imagine being in school and getting a chance to play football. I would rather do that, but he is the seventh quarterback for this team since, or excuse me, fourth in the seven weeks since training camp started. But I'll tell you what, Coach Kreiner, very excited to have him since they have a background. Well, one thing about the Bay Area, the fans are ready for the wet weather. It's been like this for a couple of weeks. Storms coming in. For more on that, let's go down to Kip Lewis. Well, guys, it has been raining here in San Francisco on and on, on and off all week long. Now, it rained very hard this morning as well as yesterday morning. But the grounds crew, they have come out to work on the field very early this morning. They put down what they call sand with some turfus. It's a drying agent to help keep the field dry. They also use the water hogs machine to extract water from the field. We'll be keeping an eye on the field conditions to see if it has an effect on today's game. 
And the field looks pretty good. They took up a lot of water. And if you were here about three hours ago, you'd worry about it. But right now, it looks like it's in excellent field condition, especially considering the weather here. Mike Panasuk will kick it off. A drama teacher back home in Indiana. And he got the call just before the season to take over the kicking at a Ferris State. Jamel Williams and Kaiser are back. Kaiser will take it at the 10. Takes the hand up to the 20. Oh, oh he's crunched down. Oh, Las Vegas will take over. James Williams made the hit for the Demons. The Outlaws on offense, first and 10. There's Grieve, and what a story this guy is. We'll get a chance to see what he can do right off the bat. And like I said, Kreiner very excited to get him going. Not uh, with absolutely no time at all to get ready for this game, to pick up the series, to pick up the, the, the terminology. It'll be interesting to see if he picks it up and picks it up quickly. His first practice was only five days ago on Wednesday, but he's certainly no rookie. He had a banner season in the Arena League. 62 Ten. touchdowns, just three interceptions three from home. San Jose last year. Pass on first down. Out to he hate me, Rod Smart. And Smart get up to the 30. Gain of six for Smart. Come on, come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Train left short. Five reach. All one. Great. Well, good cadence on the last one. He's been around this. He's played this game before. Almost got that demon defense to jump off sides. So we're watching his cadence all day long. Green 85 dead! Seems very comfortable. Green 85 dead! Hot. He hate me, Rod Smart. Running wide, and he's got good yardage to the 40 before he was tossed out by Dave Thomas. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Bring it. Bring it. Let's go. Hustle in. Let's go. Come on, fellas. Let's go. Train left. 88 tailback. Quick screen. On one. On one. Right. Definitely sounds like uh, there's not much, not much uh, fooling you there. If you hear a screen, it's probably going to be a screen. Black 324 Hawaii. Black 324 Hawaii. Well, one thing Green has played with before is the 35 That's second right. play clock. All right, good job. You notice the three wide receivers split out to the left hand side, all knew that they were in trouble. Jim Skipper, the head coach of the San Francisco Demons. Let's go Trey left short. Let's go 24 Vans. Okay, here we go. Expecting blitz. Trey left short, 24 Vans on one. Right. Can you read his personality? It seems very comfortable early on here, Greg. Without a doubt, it's just the timing thing. It's a shorter clock, so he's not used to that. Sounds like they're just going to play it safe now, yeah. trying to keep it. Uh, when they know, they think it's going to be passed, they're going to try and come back and run a little bit. Nope. Great passing in the flat. He's got Rakia Jenkins. He cannot shake loose of Dwayne Harper. Or maybe a loss of uh, perhaps a yard. Good cover. Good quicks getting out there to make that play. Double right short, 96 slant crack. Double, double right short, 96 slant crack on one. Vince All Call Day is the offensive coordinator. You will hear his voice coming inside the helmet of the quarterback, Mark Reed. Yes. 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 Green 85 dead! Green 85 dead! Hunt. Nelson in motion. He had a touchdown last week. He hate me. He's got the carry. And he turns the corner and gets six yards. Rod Smart. Already off to a better start than last week. I was just going to say, last week when he came out, uh, we, we had the two two uh, LA Extreme linebackers, I hate he and I hate he too, both went after him and shut him down effectively, especially in the first half of that game. They've come up and really had to rely on Rod Smart early in this game. Smart at 24 yards on 15 carries last week. He's already got 17 today. Third and 10. for a big play to Furry was way short on his pass and incomplete so the Demons defense holds in their first test against the new quarterback no 
fair catch, as you know, in the XFL. The fourth down is an adventure. The ball has to get to the 34 of San Francisco before it is a live ball. That's the 25-yard marker, the 34. And not coincidentally, the Demons have two players right on that 34-yard line. As you look at James Hunden back deep. McCallum, excellent punter, will do the chores for Vegas. He booms that one. Plenty of room to catch it. Hunden's got it, 16. He can fly. Just tripped up as they got near the 28-yard line by Jonathan Jackson. 43-yard punter, 7-yard return. Well, a quick lesson by Grimm figuring out how to work the clock here in the XFL. Understand the footing on the field a little bit. And he also realized he's got a little bit of an anti uh, San Francisco Demon defense that might be able to be made to jump because of Keaton's. Jim Kreiner told us he was comfortable with his quarterback. You saw that certainly allowing his quarterback to throw the ball as if he's been here for years. And flags all over the place. <laughs> Raining. Yankees here. That's right going to make it uh, tough on the Demons right off the bat. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, it's still first down. Scott Adams got a little antsy there, saw some shifting by the defense. He gets a quick jump out there. I tell you what, defense, our offensive tackles, they've got such a tough job of working against quick outside linebackers and defensive ends. They are on a spring, and I think that's why you see him jump every once in a while. Why? Number one pass Why? offense, number one overall in the XFL. And a look at the pass here under pressure. Veloski just throws it away. He was pressured by Angel Rubio. And the defense for Las Vegas is just unbelievable, especially up front. Yep. They've already had nine sacks. There's uh, Rubio, Carl Simpson also with him. Trio right, five pass, check five. Run. There's Kelvin Kinney, he's the right end who leads the league in sacks with four. And on the other side, you've got Edwards, who's got three. Just how good is this demon offense? We may find out today. Hunden in motion. Velosky looking downtown his way. Got a step on the defender, but it is just out of bounds. And it's incomplete. Boy, Blackwell caught up with Hunter and played him very well. You know, it, it, the, the throw was nice. It was just at the absolutely you know, wrong get... place. Had he thrown, a little, uh, had it been a little shorter, then the receiver could have come back for it. A little longer, the receiver could have gone long, but it was right there. The defender didn't have to do anything. Done, done. What? Vegas is 21 percent against on third down this year. They've been terrific in this spot, but not here. Hunden's got it at the 50, and Blackwell stops them. First down, Demons, a 27-yard game. And you know, guys, that's one of the things that makes that motion, the receiver motion, so important. Even if it what? isn't the receiver who's in motion, it makes all the coverage people on that side worry. They start worrying about getting a little bit deep, a little bit too early, and Hunden there to make the catch underneath. Yes, sir, we always get it on third down. Five. Zip for nine. Well, maybe Mike always gets it on third down, but this year the opponent's just eight for 38 against Vegas. That's the best mark in the league defensively. 21%. Demons click on their first chance. There's Jimmy the Jet Cunningham in the flat for five yards. Let's go trio left. Okay. Let's go four zone first down. Trio left, four zone first down. Ready? Let's go, let's go. Get up there. Before the XFL, Pulaski not played an outdoor game since 1993 with 11 players on the field. Did have some CFL time. Backfield, it's Terry Battle. No gain in the play. Terry Battle had two touchdowns last week. Both teams, though, trying to ring, find themselves ring. running the ball because it's been a tough go for each of them. Well, especially, like I said, this Vegas defense, very strong up inside. One of the things you're going to see from the Demons offense is a lot of a lot of guys split wide. Here we've got a two-back situation. Velosky passing here. Rolling in trouble. He's knocked down. Ball the ball play by Tree Pala. The ball is free. No signal from the referees yet. Yes, the outlaws will lead the league in turnovers. Have number nine. 
Regular. Tui Pala made the hit. Carl Simpson came up with it. The Outlaws are in business on home. One time out. Saturday night of XML action last night, courtesy of Bud Light. Let's take a look at the highlights. It is a cold and rainy night in Chicago. Oh, and Lester has a ball slipped right out, of his, right out of his hand. Maybe it was an interception. Asked to look to get the end zone. It does. And uh, New York wins their first one, 13 to nothing. Casey Weldon against Jeff Brom. And moments ago, this play. Right. There's going to be a shovel pass up front. Could not find his receiver. As he spun, he puts the ball down. Does not keep in his hand. Outlaw ball. Big Carl Simpson, the 317-pound defensive tackle. Well, but he moves, does he? And he can fly. He gets up. Good pressure up in the front of the pocket. Kleiner thinks he's the best defensive lineman in the league. Flash 16 dead! Hot! Second chance for Grieve, and he hate me has got it. And he's off to a fine start. Six more yards over. there for Rod Smart, who came in averaging just 2.3 on 40 carries. Bro. Well, you know, with the quarterback situation changing, you knew that they were going to, uh, last, last week they focused on Rod Smart. This week they had to kind of take a look at what the new quarterback was going to do for him. And Rod right. is taking advantage of that. Here we go. Green passing, looking toward Nelson, and Corey pulls it in. Hold up, hold up. Jim Kreiner, the head coach. And we can run the football on these guys, okay? Talking about running against them, that's something, again, we talked about they've not been able to do in their three games this year. The concern, as we heard early from Kip Lewis, the turf, they've done everything they can to keep it dry and workable, especially for the running backs. Play action, Grave. In trouble, he's sacked hard by Abdul Salam Noah, and it was forced by Jermaine Miles as well. Loss of seven. Eric England came through. The one guy left in the backfield to block didn't matter because about four defenders came through. One guy ain't going to stop anybody. So far for this defense, the third time that, that they have come after Mark Grebe. That's a prize package worth almost 600 pounds. England and Noah. Check Green 18 Hawk. Green 18 Hawk. Grebe on the draw to Smart. He hate me. Another good gainer inside the 40. A gain of 10 yards. But you can say what you want about Rod Smart, but he has got some good awareness inside. You saw early in that run, he got grabbed on the shoulder. Just a little flip of the shoulder, just back, and he loses the defender who's got the first hit on him. Good awareness of where the holes are and where to make the cut for the hole. Winner of the recent ESPN poll, which sports view do you want to see in? Was it Kobe Shaq? Was it Lynn Cross and Clark? It was he hate me versus whatever team he's playing. <laughs> there was so much love going around. Third and six. And Green's going to use an early timeout. With the crowd here letting him. Timeout. And Off walking him back to pro football. Well, so far, play selection for Las Vegas. Four passes, four runs. Certainly helping. Mark Grieven is an inaugural quarterback showing for the Outlaws. We want to remind you that next Saturday on NBC at 8 will be the U.S. Army game of the week as the L.A. Extreme take on the New York, New Jersey hitman at the Meadowlands. Now a look at Anthony DeCosmo, the hitman receiver, who has certainly overcome a lot. An incredible story. His mother, Katrina, helped raise over 80 foster children, but no one has touched her more than Anthony. It's evident that I've been adopted from day one. It's never been hidden from me. And people always ask me, how did you deal with a situation like that? And it's, it's never been tough because my mother has always found the right words. 
to give me strength or, or to help me too through the hard times. I knew that his dream was someday to be a professional football player. And of course, like I said to him, my prayers, I have prayers for everybody in the family, but I put them aside and they're all for Anthony. I'd love to one day maybe give somebody the same opportunity that I was given. That's, that's what my goal is. Anthony DeCosmo, a great example of the U.S. Army's victory in life. After the first... Back at Pac Bell, and a big play here for Las Vegas, third and six at the 37. So you're talking about a long field goal to about 54 if they did not get any yards here. Gonna go down. Right up, Jenkins is oh. the ball held up, but it was thrown short. Terrence Joseph broke it up, and again, I think Bobby had his man there at the at first, but he couldn't get it there. Yeah, exactly. The kid Jenkins, Jenkins, right and wide open down between the safeties. All coverage back behind him. We talked about the green arm strength. That if that ball was thrown any harder and gotten there any faster, they've got a touchdown. Three defenders were able to catch up to that football and make the play. So now they're going to punt instead of go for the long field goal. Of course, again, no fair catch. Ball live when it hits the 12. And they may, last week they recovered, you may recall. Going to have to return it. Terrell Sutton in traffic, and I don't think they gave him nope. the danger zone. No, the danger zone. And the flags are down as Sutton did make the catch. tough as a, as, a, as a coverage guy coming down though to come down the field know you got to leave the five yards but especially in a short punt like that you know how do you sit back and not take the shot violation of the five yard radius on the kicking team five yard building will be added to the end of the run first down if you can the best thing to do is to find get the right speed where you can just time it up but those guys standing well within that five five foot Five-yard danger zone. So Kowalski will take over. It is only a five-yard penalty. So it moves it out to the 15. Drink back, drink back, drink back, drink back. Which I think punt returners would like to have that changed. Five, 90, touch. Kowalski. And Avid Hunter throwing to Jamie Reeder. Let's take an inside look at the quarterback. Okay. Throwing a pass to a receiver and shooting a gun has a lot of life because there's a finality to it. You know, once you pull the trigger, it's gone. And whether you made the right decision or not, either the shell is shot or the ball is gone. So you got to make the right choice the first time. And once you pull that trigger, make sure you got it. Well, so far today, the fishing guide and cow broadcasters pulled the trigger several times. He hasn't killed anybody. <laughs> I told him name toward you once, but yes, thanks a lot. I mean, we, we got four quarters. We can go. Winans was the intended receiver. Did lose that one play, though, early on. But fortunately for San Francisco, did not cost them on the turnover. And that's where Vegas is having their troubles, Bob. All the turnovers they've created defensively, they have not cashed in on the other side of the ball. We talked about San Francisco and the type of offense they like to run. I guess it was born up here, the West Coast offense. One rush so far, seven oh, pass plays geez. for the Demons, and what? they're holding true to form. Number eight are coming. Woloski going the other side. Titus Winans, he's going to come up short, I believe, of the first down. He did get about seven oh, on the third and nine. You know, but they, we talk about them throwing the ball, hardly running the ball. They use those short pass plays like that as run plays. The only difference is, is that when you hand the ball off to a running back out of the backfield, he's got, you know, five, six defensive linemen and linebackers around him. If you can get the ball out quick to a receiver out in the corner, he may be, be able to beat one, maybe two guys to pick up the first down. <laughs> Just one outlaw is back. It's Jason Kaiser again, no fair catch. Ball is live right now. Kaiser comes up. Now gonna go the other way, has some room. Oh, and he slid down, knocked down at the 50 yard line. And it was Terrence Joseph that came up with a stop. But again, good field position for the Outlaws trying to get on the board in the bay. As a and 
by the United States Army, an army of one. That, that Bud Light would go well with those crabs there. I was going to say, speaking of crabs, Bob, how the heck are you? You're, you're oh, right? man, that's looking good. Okay. You go. You're <laughs> kind of a crabby guy yourself. <laughs> I'm a little crabby, thanks a lot. <laughs> that had been a great right. morning. <laughs> Dungeness crab, right? Dungeness, that's right. Dog it, dog it. They live in little dark rooms with chains on the walls. <laughs> Green starting at the 50 once again. Green 85 See if Green can move him this time. Oh, he ain't me. He's been the best offensive weapon so far today. Flags are down as he really fought hard just to get a yard or two. And Dave Thomas, along with Dwayne Harper, plastered him. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to come back with a holding call on one of the most experienced linemen out there, David Diaz and Fonte. Abdul Salam Noah, number 92 for the Demons, really got good penetration. And, uh, well, you know, the experienced offensive linemen are told, protect your guys. Offense, 36-year-old. 10 yards. David Diaz is spotted. Right, watch, watch the penetration in the middle, 92, and Infante just basically had to wrestle him down to the ground. Being an old defensive lineman, they always cheat. Right. Just only, they only catch him once in a while. That's right. A couple of Super Bowls for Dave with Denver. Hell, I think he's held me. I think Infante Diaz is held me. Is he that old? Yeah, he's pretty old. Yeah. <laughs> Green over the furry near side. He got a few yards Whoa. back. You better stop, baby. So far, Rod Smart has been very effective. He hate me. For Las Vegas. Very effective, the short pass out there, and also just taking the handoff in the backfield. The footing we talked about earlier might not be the best, but he's whatever he's doing right, he's got the right fleet for it. He's making the good cuts, finding the holes, and picking up the yardage. Just in case you just returned to Earth, he uses that name as a mental motivation. His opponent always hates him. Taking a look, finding a seam. Here he goes to the right, and gain of five yards for Smart bring up a third and about nine. One of the big problems is this defense, here we go, here we go. defensive here we go. front isn't separating left, from the offensive dip, line. Empty, double left, Adidas, uh, 50 hot, Adidas Nike. Oh, on, ready? Somebody helping Grieve there with the play call. I don't know. I think it sounded like he was just naming off the shoes on his defense on his offensive line. 0 for 2 on third down, 3rd and 9. And he hate me in motion, and Grieve's going to spend his second time out. No, no, no. He only has one left. Remember, he's only had five days of practice, so uh, pretty difficult. Of all the positions, you'd like to have a little more experience at Probably the quarterback position. <laughs> you think? Yeah, probably. <laughs> what? <laughs> one minute. Okay. Hey, that was. Well, as Grieve talks it over, let's uh, okay. see what's okay. going on with one of the band. demon right. cheerleaders. Hi, I'm Tanisha, and I'm a kindergarten teacher here in Hayward, California. And this is my class behind me. I've wanted to be a teacher ever since I was in the second grade, and now I'm finally living out my dream. On a daily basis, I shape the lives of today's youth for a brighter tomorrow. Not in the show. But when school's out, I'm an XFL cheerleader for the San Francisco Demons. There she is, the teacher. You remember a teacher like that, Bob? Oh, sorry, I was singing. I probably did when I was in kindergarten. Shaping the, shaping the youth of today. Right, 22 Austin. I won. Hey. Must have been a private school. <laughs> five eight. Five eight. Five eight. Five eight. Five eight. All right, back to third and nine. Green 15 Hawk. Green 15 Hawk. Green passing going downtown looking for Furry. Which leaned for the ball. And incomplete. He was looking for the call. Terrence Joseph 
who's been terrific in the backfield for the Demons so far. Again, on the coverage, along with the veteran Dwayne Harper. And Las Vegas, again, great field position, Bob. And they can't muster up even a first down this time. You know, it's one thing to, to be able to move the ball up and down the field and not score. I mean, at least at that point, you can say, listen, what do we got to do different in the red zone? If you're being handed great field position and you can't even get into field goal range, you, you, you really got to take a hard look at the, what you well, come into the game with, what kind of game plan you started with. No fair catch, nearly blocked. McCallum gets it off. Hunted will take it at the 12. Well, not much for James. The fans here call this place affectionately the hellhole and a tribute to them. Offensive lineman Scott Adams. Our first game we came out and down in one end zone there were a lot of banners hanging up that said hellhole. The group of fans that was down there, just awesome. Rowdy, just raising cane. So over the last week or so I started thinking about all these nicknames guys have on their jerseys and it seems all be about look at me. I asked some of the people, you know, would that be all right with the league to put it on there? Just kind of started toying the idea. And so it's my way to give a little back, but it's also my way to say, hey, Welcome to my house. This is my house. When you come to the hell hole, it's time to get it on. Okay. And there he is, Scott Adams, 315, 34 oh, years man. of age out of Georgia. Demon's second round pick, and he says he's having the most fun he ever had in football. Owns his own business, doesn't have to do this, Bob, for the money. Another one of these guys, and there's just so many stories up and down. The passion for this game. Yeah. The, I would almost call it the sick passion that, that you guys have for football. And uh, they just, there's nothing better for these guys. Scott Adams, right tackle, a fan favorite. Reverse. Old sneaky play to Hunden coming around the near side. Leapfrogging up to the 33. He was smashed by Mike Crawford and Kevin Scott got a piece as well. Well, as a defender, you love getting a shot like that, but... You know, I wouldn't get too excited because the guy was up in the air. It's easy to hit a guy who's kind of kind of floating. It's, it's a little different when you're hitting a guy who's digging in. But good. And this just shows the quicks. None of the none of the defenders for the outlaws able to respond in time. There's the hit. Jason Kaiser also involved. Quick play to Jimmy the Jet Cunningham. Flag down after the play as Kevin Scott is pushing and shoving with the Jet. Money's worth there. Cunningham only goes 165 pounds, about the size of Bob's left hand. <laughs> but he was about to, he, he's not going to be taught any lessons. He said, another one of those, this is my house. Oh, whoa, whoa. Although he doesn't say it with the same accent that Scott, Scott Adams does. So you don't come into my house and push me around. <laughs> Now, isn't this a spot where, like, Kip okay. or Lee are supposed to be down with a bucket of water? Listen, I'm Dumping on these guys? Yeah. Personal foul, number nine on the white. Personal foul, number 15 on the red. The penalty's offset. The down will count. Second down. All it comes down to is a little, a little taunting there. Standing over the top. Cunningham taking exception. Good one-handed shot, though. I don't blame Cunningham. Scott, no, you know, you Scott just, gave him a little smack in the head, and then he gave him a little knee action. Gosh, you know, stand over the top of the guy like that. I mean, that's just basically saying, you know, I've just, I've just claimed my prize. You know, there's some pride out here. These guys don't want to take that. Final play of the first quarter. Play clock down to two. And Pulaski just gets it up wide open is Juan Johnson, the fullback. And he brings it up near the 45 for a gain of five. To round out the, quarter. the first quarter here at Pac Bell. Tough going for the O so far. Hey, TNN, Miami Vice. The boots and shoes with an attitude, because you never know what you might run into. There's battle out of the back. That was the Lug's hit of the week featuring the Lug's frenzy. Be careful out there. And as you look at Scott Adams, the hellhole, and the score here to start the second quarter, the rare Terry battle offensive Double tackle of the week, although we just understand he's now made his way to the locker room and won't try to get an updated report. Terry Battle, though, does not avoid any of them. The Lugs hit the week. A lot of interesting, interesting formations we're seeing here for this Demon team. A lot of motion. The play action.
action. Pulaski is going over the head of Juan Johnson. Again, though, you see the push by the Las Vegas front. You know, and, and when you talk about pass rush, everybody thinks about the outside guys. They think about the defensive ends or the backers who make the, play, make play, the rush play on the outside. But it's actually the guys, not to, to, to self-promote, but it was those guys on the inside that really had to collapse the pocket. If you don't get a push up into the pocket and take away that place for the quarterback to step up, he's going to step up and be able to throw all day long. Not to self-promote, however. Not to self-promote. Man in motion. It looked like the Jet got over the line of scrimmage before the stop. It's complete. Juan Johnson. A gain of 12 yards. And the Demons finally have the ball on the other side of the field, and they're on the move. Ball to 42 for the Demons. Two and one. Las Vegas, two and one. Winner takes over the West lead. Las Vegas later tonight hosting Memphis, but also gets a three and one. That's one on UPN. Look at this. Brandon Young out of the backfield. A gain of two. Mark Reeb, last week a Stanford classroom. This week an outlaw uniform. When you're out there in the huddle getting smacked around. Any second thoughts? No. I, it's, it's, this is great. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Like a hand in glove? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Four of seven, 17 yards for Grieb or, or Mr. Glove. Right. <laughs> well, we put up. Mark didn't want to give up that master's program, so he's worked it out with the school. Worth about 30 grand, and he's a grad assistant for the Cardinal football team. He doesn't have to pay for it. Flags all over the place. Well, on, on first uh, examination, it looks like Angel Rubio jumping. Not to self-promote, but that was the defensive tackle. <laughs> Self-demo. He jumped up. Right to the snap. Encroachment. Defense. <laughs> number 68. You know, the Five yard penalty. It's still Six. second down. Hut! Hut! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, nice. Way to go. Mike Pulaski gets a gift and thanks him for the gift. Very, very what a polite guy. Delightful guy, yes. I'm sure Angel and his boys will have some more gifts for him later. <laughs> Pulaski, he can fire it. Oh, good bullet. On the money to James Hunden. Blackwell in the coverage, but there he is. I think saw the greatness of Pulaski. Yeah. Really zipped it, and he had to make it a perfect pass. It really was. Blackwell was right there to make the play. He came what? in. There it is. You saw the timing of Blackwell coming in to make the hit. That ball was zipped. And Corey has three picks the last two games and a couple of sacks. So he's going against perhaps the best corner, best DB. Johnson up the middle. Hey, he got loose for a few. A gain of nine yards. Flag on the play. Looks like actually... Juan Johnson's face mask might have got tugged on a little bit in that play. That would have been Kurt Cavea. You know, it looks like a, it looks like a handle. <laughs> Not to self-promote. Not to sell, yeah. But us defensive guys used to grab them all the time. It's better getting caught enough. Incidental face mask, defense number 92. Five-yard penalty, result, first down. This is up. Under 77, Sam Wheel for the zero. Under 77. That's the veteran well, leader of the defense, no, no, Coach Gouveia, no, no, no. 36 years of age, long-time NFLer. A no, 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 no. couple of Super Bowls to his credit. Still loves the game, that's why he's still playing. And he's here in the XFL. Woloski <laughs> going to wind up with Manning. Young, firing in! Touchdown, Steven! Brandon Young, a 12-yard scoring play. The first touchdown against Las Vegas. 13 plus quarters this year. Well, we just showed Kurt Govea been around a long, long time. He was in man-to-man -man coverage. He's out there, you saw him trying to get out to his man. Just could not get out and they're picking up to make the play. That's an illegal fit. Hey, a lot of these teams have this problem. 
in the red zone, getting balls in the end zone. On the, con this time. On the conversion, no, nothing free here. And Pulaski really got the idea of that XFL rule with Rubio and Crawford in his face. Told you so, he's going against. Yes, he gave it to him. And again, the emotions rising here with the Demons and the Outlaws. Too happy, not happy looking at that score either. The XFL on TNN is brought to you by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite, it's Miller time. By M&M's, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hands. And by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Well, the emotions are not only on the field, you can hear in the crowd. Here at Pac Bell, the home team is on top six set. And Craig, this uh, this Vegas team not used to being behind in the score. Out of 198 minutes played already this season, they've only been behind almost just under 14 minutes. 198 minutes. So see if they do from a comeback situation. High kick. Chris Payne up to the 28. Mike, nobody has scored on this Las Vegas defense all year long until just now. Did you guys have any doubts? Uh, not coming in. We expected to score. That's what we do as an offense. You know, you expect to put the ball in the end zone, and we did it. What happened after the extra point? You didn't seem happy down there. Uh, 44 was trying to dig his fingers into my eyes. So, you know, if you want to play that way, it's a little cheap, but so be it. <laughs> Thanks, Jim, because I didn't see that. That was a beautiful thing. That's Mike Crawford. Come on, wow. Bob. That's, that's really BS no, right there. No, no, I'm saying it's a beautiful thing that we caught that. Oh, no, oh. Even, <laughs> even though I'm on that side, <laughs> yeah. I was never an eye gouger. I always wondered how those hands could hold nothing. My fingers weren't long enough to get in there. Green 15 Jack! Green 15 Jack! <laughs> so the outlaws on the attack. And he hate me. Gets up to the 15 yard line. Hey, let's go. Get on the other. Mike Crawford, first touchdown scored on you guys all season today. Are you guys discouraged? No, come on. No. Not at all, man. Now, were you poking Pulaski in the eyes or was it just uh, good, hard fought football? No, he's poking me in the eyes, man. Him and I are good friends, though, so it's all fun and games. Quarterback poking a big guy like you in the eye? Huh? Quarterback poking a big guy like you in the eye? Yeah, what's up with that? I can't believe that. <laughs> Uh, Mike didn't sound like he was kidding, Bob. <laughs> I'm talking about Pulaski. Little pump and run, and uh, Green not on the same page with his receiver, Corey Nelson, incomplete. Crawford is known as a wild guy. Well, that's just, you know, that, that's just a little bit too far. I mean, I understand what guys, when you get up out of a pile, and maybe you push off somebody's neck, or, you know, you step on them, things like that, little things that all they're gonna do is leave a little mark and make you wince a little bit. But, you know, to actually go after somebody's eyes, Hey, right, man. There's a shot of him when he was with the Dolphins jumping off a house into a pool. He's a skydiver. He's one of those kind of wacky, wacky guys. But Wolowski uh, certainly got his number. Green's got to get on the number. That pass nearly picked off, and it did make its way through, but they're going to say incomplete, I believe, as Nelson was the intended receiver. Nelson wants the catch. He's not going to get the call. Wendell Davis, great aggressiveness of coming over the top, making a play, but that's just not going to work for him. They're backed up. McCallum will kick this from about his goal line. Damn ball. I'm not going to shoot you, baby. I'm not going to shoot you. Ooh. That looked like a catch to me. Looked like a catch to me. Yep, no, no replay. You got to go on uh, on what the professionals down there in the striped shirt call. That's the way it is. Vegas using their last timeout here already of the first half. Tonight, the XFL continues in Los Angeles, just down the road on UPN. It's the Memphis Maniacs and the Los Angeles Extreme. Rashan Salam looking to lead the Axe back to victory. They're one and two. This is a huge game. Like Chris Barlow, Brian Bosworth, Michael Barhan, Chris Raggy for the action tonight in LA. Out of way. Out of way. No 
No doubt about it. With this, uh, with this extreme team, had a chance to talk to a guy named Juan Long. He was the guy that wore the I Hate He Too. Yeah. He said it, it was a good idea when he did it, but he got in a lot of trouble. His mom said, "Don't do it anymore. Your grammar is horrible." <laughs> <laughs> is that true? <laughs> <It's> a true story. <laughs> So that'll be a good one. Another battle for the West as L.A. tries to, to keep Let's keep go. pace with the winner of today's game. It's a big game in a 10-game season because if Memphis loses, they'll be 1-3. and three, and L.A. trying to tie up for first with the winner of this game. And, and Again at UPN tonight, 7 no. Eastern. And it's tough. It really is tough because, I mean, with a short season like this, you can still have these good teams, but they lose a couple of games, and everything's messed up there. Ball live right at the 40. It's a live ball right here, Hunted. Go, Hunted, go, Hunted. At the 47. Go, go, nice skip. We'll get to the 40-yard line. The coach of San Francisco is Jim Skipper. Let's hear from him. You know, I've been a minority all my life, so I'm not going around and say, oh, every move I make, I'm a minority. Oh, we got to win a game, I'm a minority. No, hey, listen, I'm a football coach, all right? And as soon as, they, you know, we'll be better off as soon as they can and not look past people's uh, background as far as head coaches. Hey, just a coach. I mean, there's nobody now counting saying, hey, they got 938 black guys in the league, okay? Or, or you don't go around counting uh, uh, how many black golfers on tour, uh, how many white golfers on tour, you know? So they make it an issue. When it no longer becomes the issue, then we turn the corner. Yeah, man. Well, the skip could not have enjoyed that as Tui Pala for the Outlaws comes up with the ball. Kelvin, Kenny grabbing it. Good hit up inside. Good penetration. So again, the outlaw D leading the way for Vegas, causing the turnover. Watch it right here. Uh, uh, Pawlowski doesn't even get a chance to set up. He gets whacked. Ball comes loose. Calvin Kenny with the recovery. Boy, his hand was pretty close to starting to go yeah. forward. Yeah, it looked like it. Looked like a good call. They what? They they really put pressure up the middle on that that outlaw defense. Now their offense. Kind of digging their own holes since they were 74. To the snap. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. It's still first down. Now John Blackman, number 74. All right, let's go. Here we go. Here, let's go. Stay positive. Let's go. Trey Wright, 17, Sally. On one. Let's make the noise for your room and defense. Seven penalties now for Vegas. He keeps going. Woo. Almost crossed the 50 down to the 45 before he was stopped by Kevin Case for hard. It's over. Oh, you got to wrap up. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. Carl Hansen, 75, gets him at the line of scrimmage. He's got to get separation. Problem is the defense. You got to get separated from the guy blocking you. And then when you got to run him back, you wrap your arms around him and you drag his butt to the ground. Straight right. 324, Hawaii. First down. First down. Right. So again, great Learning, field Learning. position for the Outlaws, starting two drives at midfield, and again Solid. taking over here. Team in 44-3. Locked at the line of scrimmage. Oh, Emil Palmer, the big guy out of Syracuse, got a hand up to knock it down. Hey, it's all timing, man. If you can't, if it, with those quick releases like that, you get a three-step draw from your quarterback. You can't get penetration. There's no way you're going to get it with a big guy standing in front of you. So you've got to be able to get your hand up and timed up just that well like Emil Palmer. The Big E. Three for his last six. Three, 15, dead, hot. Three over the middle. He's got a receiver in Brett Bash. A diving catch that nearly came up short again. But Besh was able to extend to make the grab. Hey, good awareness by Grieb, though. Did you see that? He was, he got flushed out to the, to his Here we go. right. Here we go. Saw Here we go. Come receiver, come we saw the back the of the flat, Turn and then right. had the awareness to throw it to the guy who was open a little bit farther downfield. Turn you up. 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 Triple. Triple. Turn. 315 Hawks. 315 Hawks. Hot. <laughs> Here's the Amy again, another big bursting hole for Rod Smart. He got down to the 25 for a gate of nine. And he's running to rip it. You know what's happening? Regular, regular! They're running a lot. 
to the weak side of their go. formation and put three wide go. to one this side. Way. Deuce left, 96 plant on one. On one, right. And then they've been running back to the weak on side. One. And they've had a lot of success, especially three. when it's been yeah, running back yeah. to their left. He ate me again, the lone guy in the backfield. Off the set. Set! Purple 19 Hawks! And it's coming away! Purple 19 Hawks! Cut! Oh. He ate me, he's going to get it, and they're going to hate him here, inside the 20, down to the 15. Perhaps for the first time this year, the opponents really do hate Rod Stark. <laughs> Game of 11. Okay, here we go, hold up. Once Hold again, up. they went weak side. Trey Wright, 98 toss, first down. First down. Ray. And the success of the run game has got to be making Green even feel more comfortable. Without a doubt, the pressure is not on him to make the big play. <laughs> on the bench, he hate me. Not much to the right. Still find some room. to pick up almost five, and then may have been face masked again as he got down near the first down. Rush. Well, we talked about them, about them having success to the weak side. That one was a strong side run. A lot of defenders over there to make the play. It was up to Ron hey, Smart, though, hey, to find the opening to get his it. extra yardage himself. Hold up, hold up. Hold up, let's go. Hold up, right here. Let's go, hold up. Square it up. Where to run, Ron? Watch it. There's people out there to make the play on him. He makes a miss. Good job on Rod Smart. He hates me. They called it a personal foul against Eric England. And that moves the ball. Two half the distance short. down to the five on the face mask. First and goal at the five. With some time, followed from behind, he nearly threw it in the arms of battle as England was all over him incomplete. The Las Vegas offense with just four touchdowns now in their fourth game. The defense has two. That's right. They're trying to get number five here. A buddy of mine is saying when, they, when Gorvea, their oldest linebacker, is scoring as many touchdowns as they are on offense, they got problems. But you saw the rush there by England. Steve Thomas, the middle linebacker, made the initial stop, and it was a good one. Still a gain of about three. You know, why, I don't know why they come down. Teams do this all the time, too, Greg. They get down to the red zone, they get in closer, and then the goal line situation, and everything changes all, all of a sudden. All of a sudden, they've got to pass the ball. All of a sudden, they've got to run strong side when they're on a weak side. Stick with what you got. First down. Green's going to have to deal with this. He didn't have to worry about that over Stanford and his master's program. For the yeah. touchdown. Woo! Woo! He hate me with his first XFL touchdown of his oh, career. We're on extra point. We want to play offense. Here we go. Okay, good job. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Smart 12 carries, six yards, yeah, one, one TD. Stay right short. 48 Tiva on one. On one. Okay. Keep in mind the conversion rate in the XFL. Two for six for Las Vegas, 33% of the conversion. A little lower than the league average, but you have to earn it. Jesus, he's dead. Rave gonna roll. Traffic in the end zone. Fire. He's got his man. A flag is down, however, as Mike Corey made the catch. A flag down. So let's see if the Outlaws take the lead or not. Eligible receiver number 74 downfield. Oh. Replay the try after a five yard penalty. Oh, oh. oh you're in the end zone. Look where the ball was. The penalty was on John Blackman. You know, I was a lineman. He was seeking okay, the touchdown, go. and I was looking at him standing in the end zone going, You ain't supposed to be there. Right here, right here, right here. I don't think you know you're not okay, supposed to be there. Straight right, short. 25 bands on one. Oh, right. Black, black. Well, it could be a costly penalty, even a game-turning penalty. These one point plays. Three fifteen hard. You got it. Right Game is showing blitz. They're coming with the house. Green throwing.
Right side is incomplete, looking for Jenkins. And what caused that certainly was the blitz by the Demons. Man, they brought everybody on that one. Left everybody else singled up. Rod Smart taking the ball in. He's going to work hard. Yeah. And he's the guy that gives him a touchdown. Hey. Yes, sir. The fiery Tommy Maddox orchestrated another dramatic fourth quarter comeback. LA's third consecutive game decided on the last play. This week, will the field general continue his heroics? Or will Memphis's Rashan Salam go maniac in LA? Rashan Salam! The Memphis Maniac. The LA Extreme. The XFL tonight on UPN. <laughs> Well, they certainly do hate him. He hate me with a touchdown here for the visiting outlaws. A two-yard Ronnie at 40, the 48 on the drive. First one of his XFL career. His name has been the big thing so far, but his play is living up to it in this game exactly. for the first time this year. You want to know something, Craig? After a day like this, I, if I were him, I might go back to my own name because he is making a name for himself. That might be a time to say, hey, I am smart. You can't do that. Wouldn't be very smart. <laughs> okay. I mean, everybody knows the guy now. That's right. Ball came off the tee with the Bay Area winds, which are not as bad here at, by a long shot as they were over at the stick around the other side of the bay. Boy, they had some weird weather over there. Played some games over there. Looked like a Stephen King novel. <laughs> Jimmy the Jet Cunningham at the five. Up to the 20, trying to find a seam, and he's down to the 23 yard line. He hate me. Quarterback Mark Grieve is loving you right now. He's a little busy right now, fellas. Offensive meeting. Lee, you get back in there. A moment right, or two. Hey, listen up now, man. That's a hell of a drive. 99 yards on the damn drive. Hell of a job. Now listen, that's just making damn plays because you're playing your butt off. That's all. We made mistakes, but we kept hammering the damn thing at them. We had guys fighting their ass off to make plays. And that's what this damn game's all about. So let's get out there every damn well, you can tell where he's focused, man. He knows that offense can drive the ball. Orlowski over to battle. He's going to throw it, baby. But nobody was ready for the throw. Oh, it was a disaster for the Demons. It looked like there was no receiver prepared as Mike Crawford made the hit a loss of 13. What the heck happened to that throw? Well, Pulaski got hit as he threw the ball right up under the armpit. So the ball kind of floated back. Now, was it going to be a double pass? I don't, I don't know. Looked like was to to it looked like battle watch you to see Pulaski get hit on the oh. arm. Oh. If that was a planned double pass, then uh, they were not positioned because he was a he was ahead of the line. Of right, if it was planned, only the quarterback and battle knew about it because there's no wide receivers out there. You, you gotta have somebody to throw to. In motion Cunningham. Pulaski has a little room to run if he wants to. He's gonna fire wide right open. open. Cunningham. The Jets got it at the 35. Mike, he could have gained an easy five or ten running, but he saw his receiver for a game of 20. You know, that's what you want from a mobile quarterback. Not a guy who wants to run at the drop of a hat, but a guy that will move enough to keep himself valuable as a quarterback and be able to focus downfield, which he did getting the first down. The Demons know they're in a ball game after the Outlaws responded on a nice drive by their rookie quarterback, rookie of the XFL. Hunted in the flat. Punched by Chris Bain in the first set, eight of five. Jay Hunt. Here. Hold up, right here. Let's take a closer look now at a demon cheerleader. Hi, I'm Tracy, and I'm a senior marketing manager for one of the major software companies in the Silicon Valley. And I bet you thought that life at a Silicon Valley startup was all work and no play. But not for this girl. Because after a hard day's work, I rock as an XFL cheerleader for the San Francisco Demons. There's Tracy getting this crowd going at Pac Bell. Not bad. 6'6. Six, six. Wait. 
guys having fun or what? The XFL experience is a big hit in the Bay Area. And so is she. As we get going here, three timeouts for the Demons. They'd like to use it all in score. Over the middle, near pickoff. Hunter was crunched. Oh, man. James Hunter was absolutely smashed by Jamel Williams. You know, when you when you talk about a receiver, a lot of times we give receivers grief because they won't make the tough catch or they get the alligator arms and they won't reach out for the ball. That's the reason sometimes they get a little iffy. That kind of hit at the end of the play when you're laid out. And that case, he's got you target locked, baby. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You heard James Hubbard say he's, he's good. They teach us to say that. Third down and five. <laughs> nice safe pass there to Titus Winnens. It's enough for the first down. The referee's whistling it as Vegas came up with it after the play. That's a big first down there because Vegas would have plenty of time had they That's stopped right. him there because they don't have any timeouts. Right they, now, they're going to need a lot Chicago. of time. You know, they can hold the clock a little bit better. I mean, they've only run the ball three times so far in this half. Yeah. So they're really doing a nice job of controlling getting the first down with the passing game. Velocity looks downfield, then goes to the outlet. Johnson, a couple of yards out of the play. Joey's to a power. Queen's right, Nasty. Crawford on the right, stop. Lucky Connie. Lucky, Lucky, Lucky. Lucky Connie. Who's Lucky Connie? they one of the cheerleaders. Lomonski, <laughs> he's got the jet. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. The jet's got it. Jamel Williams, I'll tell you what, you pay for it anytime you catch it. I no doubt about that. Time out. Jamel Williams coming up and making the hit. Time out, San Francisco is. The Jet may have had a wing clip there, and that hit by Jamel Williams. Ouch. The Demon fans have not seen their home club since the opener. They're starting a three-game homestand here today on the National Network. And this stadium is just packed with people watching this Demon team trying to get a score before halftime. That's the 39. Oh, another big hit by Chris Bain on Brandon Young. Huge crowd at Pac Bell Park. Near sellout in the Bay Area for the second straight game. And this place is about as nice as you will see any stadium out there what in the country. Second and ten, the outlet to the Jets. Here's the Jet. He's motoring down to the 32. Payne again on the stop. A good gainer. Gonna bring up third and short. All right, we got one left. We're leaving it for the field goal team. Field goal team over here. Field goal team, get up over here. Mike, you all right? You all right? I'm fine. You heard Coach say he wanted to keep that one last time out left. That's so he can get the, the kickoff. The, the field goal 32 goal 7. We're looking at a 49 yarder, you know? Hey, Oscar out of bounds. He's got something quick out of bounds. Their nickel guy is dinged and is out, number 20. Yeah. He's out. Just took him off his own queer street. Talking 40. Talking about Chris Bain and noticing the fifth defensive back being taken off. Let's see if San Francisco tries to take advantage. What do you do here? Third down and three. They're going to go if they say for a 49-yard field goal. If they do not make it, what do you do? Run or pass? Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I think at this point, you, you do what you're going to have to. They're going to pass because that's what they do. But it doesn't matter. they got a timeout left, so it doesn't matter if they stay inside or stay outside. They're going to use it. They're going to use it for the field goal team. Right now, they have the ability to, to go inside or outside. Long field goal, though. Fake handoff, now the shovel! He's got Battle! Battle's got the first down, nice call at the 26-yard line. 
scary battle as Velosky just drew in, struck in the coverage, right. and he got it off. And the defense knew that because they had the timeout, they could go either way with it, inside, outside. That fake draw up and inside really bumped the heavy over the bike. Backside Connie. Doubles right, 64, poster backside Connie on two, ready? There's Connie again. That's your favorite, I know, Bob. Let's see her little, her little video. Right, 90. Velosky over the middle. Oh, some contact by Otto Donnell by Kaiser. And it was, I guess, right at the right time. So the clock stopped with 20 seconds to go. That's a good hit by Jason left, so Kaiser. This will be our last play. Got three seconds to be smart. Doubles right, 34, Oscar. All one, ready? Go. With 20 seconds, they should have time for more than one plus a field goal. Well, you can still go end zone, even yeah. if you didn't get it. RJT. You may have to use the timeout here, though. RJT! Kowalski, <laughs> man in the front, wide open, hunting. Did he get out of bounds? Oh. He did not. So they're probably going to have to use the timeout, and they do. Now they got 11 Come on, seconds. My six seconds. We have to use it. That's tough. That's tough. They, unfortunately, Hunter couldn't get out. Hey, could not get out of bounds. Field goal team. He should have gotten to the. He should have got to the sideline. He had the ball. He slid to go down. And if they could have another play after it, you can see Coach is pretty upset about it. All we wanted was six seconds. He's using yeah. the top. I didn't think he was third down. Though. Well, they could right, easily go in. So no 11 right. seconds right. to go. Yeah, he didn't want to mess around the possibility of not getting uh, get the guys out there, so he called the timeout. I think you got to take one more shot at the end zone. You know, even if you don't line your team hey, up in time, coach. you can still, hey, I mean, you got a good hey. point, because even if you don't line your team up in time, you can still call the time well, out. We can get it down to six. No, no, it's no. Third no, down right now. I know. What? Let's let me throw the ball away and we'll, get six. We'll be all right, Chicken. We just got to make a tackle on the field goal. That's okay, what I'm trying to do. Mike Panasuk is out there. Hey, the kicker, but get out of the kicker's way, four. man. Get out of the kicker's way. Uh, they got no timeouts, but they can't freeze them. Now, the interesting thing here is, is Pulaski. Hey, we're just, it's going to be a black call. I'm not calling it. we got plenty of time. Protect. But everybody, but everybody already tell them that you're eligible. Here we go. Kick it on the ball. Ready? Oh. So Pulaski will hold. Yeah, I know. I was It'll trying to It'll be a 36-yard attempt. Know. Panasuk just won the four on field goals this year. They did a game winning 33 yard in week one. On the way! It's good! Gotta go for him! Gotta go for him! Mike Panasuk! We gotta get down and make a drama teacher out of Indiana until the call came for the XFL right before the season. No drama there. Comfortably connects from 36, and the Demons have the lead. Let's go! And let's go! Coach not tell me they gotta get down and make the tackle on the kickoff return. They gotta stop these guys. Don't let anybody pop one. You hate to lose the momentum that you gain after this. Get him right in here so he can hear what we got. Come here, Mike! Hey, Mike! Paddle set! Come here! Hell, he's the one that gotta know. Ding and dong and around. We're gonna squib it now. Hey, now look! Nobody... That's why he didn't answer. All of a sudden he walked away and he yelled at him. You heard, though, Skipper saying earlier he wanted to get it down to six before yeah, the Mike, kick was going to be. Had the clock it. expired. Now he has to kick it. Okay. Well, Bob, I still think he could have made one shot for the end zone. Yeah, you're, you're, with 11 you're, seconds to go. You're right. Had they, had they been able to get the, them set back up again, at least take a shot for the end zone, the they out. still had the timeout. Well, they had used but, it to and stop if they had, And if they had had a problem of getting it lined up, they still could have called the timeout and been no worse for the weather. I think they used their last one to stop it at 11. When Hunter was knocked down, the clock stopped at 11. Okay. I thought he said squib kick. He ended up kicking it all the way. You heard the coach. I heard the coach. I hate the squib. He hate me. And he's going to be stopped. So that's an interesting squib kick. <laughs> Mike Patterson. At any event, a very entertaining first half, a fiery first half. You could smell the passion. Ends, the with, a, teams. ends with a beautiful two-minute run, two-minute offense, 12 pairs, 12, 57 yards. Coach, you guys said you were going to go with a squib kick. Did you change your mind there? No. What happened was there were seven seconds left, and, and usually what we wanted to do is run the clock out without them having a chance to make a big play. 
All right, we wanted to attempt to squib it, but uh, I don't know if he hit the thing right. You know, and I was talking to Mike Pulaski at the time. What we wanted to do is just leave no time on the clock so you don't have to do a squib. But what Mike was thinking was we had two more plays. We'll take a shot in the end zone with another one because we had a timeout left. All right, thanks. He hate me. Fantastic first half. You are in the zone today. Is this to pass some time for a green, green quarterback, or are you just uh, on fire here in the hellhole? Well, you know, this is what we've been waiting on. You know, got to get our running game together. That's what we're doing right now on the Demons defense. Hold on. <laughs> he hate me. Had the game tying touchdown. And San Francisco adding a late field goal to take the lead at the half in front of a big crowd at Pac Bell. Monster truck. Back at Pac Bell, the Demons leading Las Vegas 9 6 here at the half. Well, a big night, as always, last night in the XFL. Let's take you around for the highlights of Saturday night in the XFL. Sweet home, sweet home, sweet home, Chicago! I'm trying to eat today, baby! It is a cold and rainy night in Chicago. It's Jay Iris, football and soldier field in beautiful February. Between these two teams. Back at Pac Bell, the Demons leading Las Vegas 9 6 here at the half. Well, a big night as always last night in the XFL. Let's take you around for the highlights of Saturday night in the XFL. Sweet home, sweet home, sweet home, Chicago. <laughs> I'm trying to eat today, baby. It is a cold. Big third down play here for Chicago. Oh, and Lester, there's a ball slipped right, of his, right out of his hand. Maybe it was an interception. Maybe the, the ball came loose and was intercepted by Settles. I had to make a long throw and it came out. That it stuff happens in weather like that. Asked to look to get the end zone. He does. Touchdown, New York. And that is a big score for New York, New Jersey hit man. Lester has taken a hellacious amount of punishment, and uh, New York wins their first one, 13 to nothing. My Rusty, my favorite coach. How you feeling after the win? There they go, everybody out of the blocks cleanly. It's close. It's scramble. It's oh. still alive, and it's Scott Coleman that picks it up. Casey Weldon against Jeff Brom tonight, King, and this is a battle between two of the more experienced, two more versatile quarterbacks in the XFL. on the board here in San Francisco. Mike Pulaski has been the leader all year for the Demons. We'll get to know the quarterback up close when we come back to Pac Bell. Vail, Colorado. The beautiful San Francisco Bay and here in the Bay Area, San Francisco leading Las Vegas by the score of 9-6. to six. The Demons leader is a terrific story. 31 years old. He's a top-rated quarterback in the XFL. But when you get to know Mike Pulaski, a guy who makes his living in the air, you quickly learn that his feet are firmly planted on the ground. I was so fortunate to end up with my mother and father. Um, they are my mother and father. You know, being adopted doesn't mean that, you know, you're somebody else's child. They are my parents. And I, I couldn't have been left here the way it turned out. They're, they're the two greatest people I've ever met. Someone's definitely watching over me. Part of the thing that drives me is when I was young, I was sick a lot. Uh, I had pneumonia 11 or 12 times. 
actually had a doctor tell my mother one time that if he makes it through the night, he'll probably be okay. And that was always a challenge to me. Uh, but I was able to overcome those things. So having suffered through that and overcome those kind of things, the toughness just to play football is nothing. I want to play well enough to be a good enough person that my parents are proud of me. Cut! Pulaski's going to put it up in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Demons! One of the biggest reasons I'm playing in the XFL is to come back to the Bay Area. The fans here are the fans that I cut my teeth on in big-time football. The people that, that watched me when I was at Cal were fantastic. They were loyal. They were supportive. They were neg never negative. I remember getting a standing ovation after we lost to the University of Washington after a losing game. They're just a special thing. And it's something that later on down the line I can look back at and say, you know, look what I did. And not only look what I did, but I did it for the fans that were so special to me at the college. As you look live at Mike Pulaski in the locker room, he told me this week when we talked to him, his eyes just lit up when he said, I love playing the game. You know, so much so much is, is said in, uh, about this game, and you talk to so many of the players, that's just about getting a chance to come back and play and do the things you like to do, but you can certainly see the smiles on her face, the intensity on their face when we're on the football field. I think that's the part that's really cool about it. He's got it. a baby boy on the way, too, in a few yep. months, so he's got a lot of reasons to be thankful. Give him one of those little, little XFL balls to put in the crib. Hey, another reason to be thankful. He's got a 9-6 lead at the half. It was a very a spirited, fiery first half here. Mm -hmm. kind of game you might expect between two teams battling for first place. Exactly. Right off the bat, a little taunting, a little, a little, uh, you know, who's in charge? In your face. In your Go face type of stuff. Right off the bat, they get it in. Touchdown in the man-to-man -to -man coverage against Kurt go. Govea. Where'd you go? Demons go up. Do not get the extra point as uh, Mike gets mugged. And a poke in the eye, just uh, a Mike little bit of a yeah. little three scooches action. <laughs> six nothing. He hate me at a big first half. His first XFL touchdown, and it's 6-6. Six, six. They actually converted the first time after this. But apparently, it could be costly for Las Vegas. Negated the conversion, so it was still 6-6. Six, six, and then the field goal to wrap up the first half. So yep. San Francisco leads 9-6. Winner of this game goes to three and one and takes over first in the West Division. You know, we so we look at this, it's in, and it was going the way we kind of expected. San Francisco throwing the ball 70 to 80 percent of the time, using short passes as their running attack. But on the other side, last week, remember, Rod Smart, he hate me, got shut down by the extreme defense. Today, not so lucky for the uh, outlaw defense, having almost no luck at all of getting to to Rod Smart and stopping him from running the ball and controlling the clock. And for Jim Kreiner's team, a little bit of a shaky start for Mark Grieve, the quarterback. And you can understand guys not being on the same page. The guy was in a master's program a week before at Stanford. He's got four classes he's working on. And here he is. He gets the call. Kreiner told me he's been working on trying to get him for, uh, for several months. He was his quarterback over in Scotland, great arena quarterback. Now he's here, but he seemed to get more comfortable as the outlaw offense got more success as the game went on. Well, plus two, as a quarterback, you love the fact that your running game is successful and all you have to do is hand off once in a while. <laughs> in that way, it kind of keeps things, keeps the thing a little easier for you at quarterback. If it's all on you, let's just put it this way. If Green was throwing the number of passes that Pulaski was going, there'd be a lot more mistakes, probably a couple of interceptions by now. Yeah, Mike on the other side has thrown 27 times. They've only run the ball four times in the first half. Look at the numbers. Came in the completion leader, only adding to those numbers. Absolutely. Good plays, and he's getting a, getting a lot of pressure up front, too. Not only guys from the outside, but getting good pressure from that outlaw defensive front. They're blitzing him up inside, but he's staying poised inside and getting the passes off. Well, let's take a look at the halftime stats. They are brought to you by Miller Lite. You look at the numbers, and the passing yards, I guess, stick out the most for the Demons. That's right. The, the Demons of uh, Pulaski, 148, but Rod Smart, 78 yards rushing, putting them and keeping them. Uh, keeping them competitive. The turnovers don't become a big, big factor here. And, uh, you know, as it goes on, uh, certainly he's going to be more and more involved. The Outlaws have to cash in, however, on the turnovers, and they've been able to do that despite having terrific field possession. Three times in the game, they were near midfield starting drives. All right, Mark.
Chuck, you've had a whole first half to cut your teeth on this offense, get used to your teammates. Are we in store for a good second half? Definitely. We're going to come out second half fired up and uh, get it going. Mike, you guys did a good job moving the ball. What do you have to do differently here in the second half? No mistakes. If we don't make any mistakes, we'll be a lot better than we were in the first half. We made some mental errors in the first half that killed us. Uh, without them, we'll probably get at least one more touchdown. They got belts on them. And they're made for a belt because of this thing here. You know what I'm saying? Here we go That's with the opening kick of the third quarter. Jimmy Cunningham is back deep. This guy can fly. You can see why they call him the Jet. But he's knocked down at the 27 by Chris Chikuma. The halfback and special teams player for Las Vegas. Well, they popped one of the Jets' engines uh, at the end of the first end of the first half. Took a shot out. And a, and a good completion, but uh, a tough guy coming back in and continuing to play. It's San Francisco, because uh, I guess you could say they defogged him. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, he's he's nice. back in it, you know? <laughs> that's not the ice. The ice, yeah, the fog. Nice. Actually, it turned out to be a nice day here. Expected some rain. The sun is peaking through about 55-degree temperatures. Woloski, Mike Hunter, another one of those pretty safe passes. Big hits, the story of this game in the first half. And you get the feeling these two teams do not like one another at all. It's some cheap shots on both sides. And I'm telling you what, the, the microphones, the hits that you're hearing out there, absolutely what it's like. And I tell you what, you as a viewer, you get a rare, rare opportunity here in the XFL to hear what it's like, to almost feel what it's like to be hit. Prior to the snap, false start, number nine on the offense. He pulled out before the snap. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. Well, as a defensive player, they teach you if everybody jumps off sides, if you think uh, it might, even if you think it might be you, right. point at the offensive guy. <laughs> but you got to sell it. Jackpot. Oh, right. You got to sell it. There are the numbers. Three rushes, 29 passes. Hey, and, and look at this, too. Mike Pulaski, the first half, 78% completion. Seven different receivers. He certainly knows how to run a, a West Coast-style offense. Pulaski going down the field. He knows how to do that. Johnson, who's a fullback, a range back, a gain of 21. So it's not just a little dub. First thing goes very often, set up the right. pass down the middle. Exactly right. The short things are just basically their version of the run game. And that just keeps defenses honest. But watch this. He's going to get sandwiched between a couple of guys. But did you see him? He got sandwiched. Not only did he get hit like that by two guys, but he also was staring downfield as long as possible. Kenny and Edwards a late flag thrown I didn't see him right on the uh, snap it was an illegal procedure against the Demons pretty impressive though Pulaski gets hit as he's throwing the ball by two guys you see 12 players in the huddle I guess no 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 The demon's going to want to go Preston back to the line for to start the second All half star. over again. Offense number 71. Ooh. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. You know, uh, Mike Pulaski has actually said he goes sometimes when the problems come for when they shoot themselves in the foot. Doubles Not left. so much when other people cause their problems. Oh, ready? Oh. All right, here we go. Say, as a coach, oh, no. nothing more frustrating. All right, let's pop one. Well, they gained 21. Now they lost 10 of those 21. And it makes it a long first and 20. Oh, there's 90. Jump off. Johnson was falling down as he caught the ball. Gervais on the coverage. He may have lost a couple of yards, two yards, yeah. in fact, and it brings I'll, up I'll a go. second to 22. Yeah. Where are you, Tom? Get off the Well, Mike, Mike Pulaski talked about coming on the second half, not being able to make mistakes already. They've made two major ones that have taken off. A lot of yardage on a good, uh, one good game they've had already. Look 
looking for receivers over the middle. Oh, Cunningham's hand as he threw a bullet over the middle, and it was incomplete. Fortunate for the Demons, it was not picked off in the defensive backfield. I was going to say, he had us one. As you know, he thought he had him because what they tell you is a defensive or as a, as a receiver. Screen. If you can't catch it, knock the ball down. Never tip it up Watch like that. Watch his mud on your get off. Watch the ball. Over G, over G, over G. What? Over G, over G. What is it? What is it? Over tree. What is that? I don't know. You played in the other side. You played? You don't know. Over the middle. Wide open is Wayans. He's got to the 50. And on the outlaw side of the field, very close to the first down. A big gain of 23. Oh, what, what's the personnel? What are y'all calling, man? Come on! Corner blitz from the left side of your screen. Kelly Herndon come making a hit. Uh, you know what? And I, and I, I know that frustration. Quarter! Wait, Sometimes check! Quarter! You're not communicating, or you had the wrong screen, personnel screen, on the field. Already? Go for it! Half of that time, it was just enough for the first down in a long play. Now Brandon Young in the flat. And he picks up Steven Yardage. And Vegas can do all the talking they want right now. The Demons are getting the big offensive play. Let's go, We're talking about Las Vegas. The outlaws being so tough up the middle and what they can do and shut teams down. When the play starts and there's no running backs in the backfield, there's probably a good chance you can loosen up your coverage people a little bit. Wide them out. Just an observation from those old times. And a young again, barreling forward for the first down, a gain of seven. Pulaski continues to lead the charge for the Demons. you coming into the first coming out of halftime 78 percent completion of seven different receivers right now he was he is 23 of 31 attempts wow 211 yards and one so TD. Gun, big big day for him two dragon on gunner ready out of california he was the pac-10 offensive player of the year a while ago got out of college in 91 40 touchdowns in college mostly in the arena league since then Dunbar stopped in the backfield for a loss of a couple. Velosky never really did much with the NFL. It was an eighth round pick at Tampa Bay, but talking to him about it, you know, he said, the heck with the NFL. It didn't work out for me. Does that define me as a person because I'm not making that kind of money? Check this not out. Velosky's going to give the handoff the draw play, and he's going to try and throw a block. He sees the defensive ends coming from the outside and decides to throw a block. Now, it's one thing to attempt. Oh, Better than be able to do it. Yeah. Orange 19. Got to admire it anyway. Orange 19. Shotgun Pulaski rolling left. Oh, the oh. cover. And that should have been picked off. Flag is down. Flag on the play. Oh, yeah, the top block. Oh, Kelly, Hurd, uh, Kelly Hurd had nearly picked that one. Top block. The chop block on the offensive line. When the San Francisco guys will tell you they like to mm -hmm. what they call cut block. But chop is illegal. Chop's illegal. The difference is cut I block they, they use a lot ball. because on short drops, three-step drops, they want to get guys off their feet. So they go down towards the leg, keep their hands down. And this one's on number 71, Adams. But a chop block is the illegal one, is when one other lineman is engaged with the defender, yeah. and then a second offensive lineman comes and chops him. It's illegal because you don't, I mean, it's a defender, you have so no defense from down, it. Right? This is still second down, right? This is still second down, right? Jim Skipper. Are you seeing Scott Adams number 71 Hill Hole? Uh, Queens right nasty. Lucky Connie. Ricky Yama, ready? Again, that's the name the fans have given Pac Bell, and he's just want to honor the fans, not himself. That's why he put that on the back of his jersey. 27. Lusky pressure. Goes to the out of the leader. At the 50. At the 42. Of eight, Nevaeh and Tuipala 
on the stop. So they got eight yards back. They used to have a name for that screen. It's called a old, old darn screen. Yeah. Everything starts one way. The receiver kind of falls down and eases the way back to the backside. They turn the last side, boom, pop it back to him. Lucky Connie, backside poster. Oh, right. You learn from the pro. Gun, Mike, gun. Gun, gun, gun. 24 out of 32. Oh, 20. A monster ah. game. Look out. Recovers and still fires. Oh. Oh. Like intercepted by Sanders. Oh, but uh, Kevin Scott, I believe, that he was taken down. I think it was a face mask. Nevertheless, yeah, third so turnover right. by the Demons. Right. And that time, Pulaski right. didn't get away with being off target. You know, he, he was he was right there on target. You talk about making mistakes. I told you, mistakes. man, that gay stuff. All y'all gay, man. This ain't just the gay area in y'all gay. Y'all can't get that. And uh, he talked about he would make that mistake, according to him, Pulaski. But that was just a hell of a play. I think that was just a heck of a play by Brandon Sanders. And really timing that up, coming nicely, coming from the safety position. Watch the timing here. Just in front of the receiver as the ball gets there. Pretty nifty play by Sanders. Hard in game. Here's Pac Bell, the Outlaws take over. Over here, fellas. The XFL on CNN is brought to you by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. By the United States Army, an army of one. And by Pennzoil Synthetic, don't hold back. Well, these guys aren't holding back here at Back Bell. Turned out to be a real nice day, didn't it, Craig? Beautiful. Got a little national bridge this morning. We're worried about the turf. Sun's actually come on a little bit. The fans are in full regalia. <laughs> Whatever you call it. Costumes, maybe. Regalia. Regalia. Was that a sailing race or something? Yeah, that's got, uh, <laughs> three by the play action, a little fancy dancing. Oh, for it all. How about that regalia? He's got no. it! Oh, no. Mike Murray! Mike Murray, a 41 yarder! more frustrating as a team when you battle and battle and battle straight right short 17 seven, one. Oh, up yardage get your scores and then a team comes back and hits you on a long one like that boy that just takes it out of you conversion time two for seven this year gotta give it a he hate me did he get in yes yes he hate me on the conversion. Yeah, and Bengus grabs a four-point lead. There in the third quarter. He's got the one good. Get Pac Bell bombs away to the guy right there, number 82, Furry, on the special teams. You don't get a break here, even after a touchdown to the XFL. <laughs> so he's got to cover. We give him a commercial to catch his breath. 41-yard touchdown, the conversion. 13-9 and a real good one. West Division showdown in the Bay. Jimmy the Jet, can he get there? Off the legs, he went out of bounds. Well, here's how the uh, the scoring was set up. Sanders with the interception, beautiful timing. Takes that ball away from that demon offense. And then it comes up to this long pass. Frank Furry right down the middle. Flips in between Lee Cole. Brandon Sanders, he knows that his interception led to some serious points for his team. Claude Dunbar's had a rough goal, oh, please. man. Oh, please do not try that. Entire season gets two this yards. This will be a quick game, y'all try that. <laughs> this will be a quick over there. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the tackle, the tackle will come around. 
Yeah, yeah, you're you're coming around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Well, see that everything we said game game plan wise is is there. Okay. Now let me ask you this one other thing. Now, teams have turned the ball over three times in the game. None for the Outlaws who lead the league with a plus nine giveaway take your takeaway ratio. That's terrific. Kowalski in trouble that time. Nobody home. You know, you talk about all the different statistics out there, Craig. Giveaway, takeaway, without a doubt, one of the ones that, that can lead to, uh, that can really tell the tale to which team is successful and what's not. Doubles right, 64 captains go on three. Ready? Go. Big third down play. It's third and nine for San Francisco in the game. They are a very successful four out of seven on third down. Kowalski, receivers covered on this side, then he's sacked. Coverage sack as Kelvin Kinney got him. But you saw clearly the wide receivers on the right side of the field were well covered. Yeah, good coverage on the, on the side. He never looked, he never looked middle or to the other side. He was always focused to his right. Never looked away. Saw pressure coming right away. Step back and boy, as a defender, that backside is a beautiful thing to hit. Kelvin Kinney got him. What happened to him? Bad news here. Not only did they have to get rid of the ball, but they're giving it to the Outlaws in real good field position. Excellent hang time here. Jamel Williams at his own 46. Gets a few yards back. Good coverage by the Demons and a heck of a kick by Ma Mike Patterson. Yeah. Again, though, take, the we're going to take the penalty. Field, taking over. Things have turned around from that good feeling at halftime, 9-6 yeah. with the interception and then the, the drive by Grieve. Maybe okay. the factor that the Demons well, didn't respect Mark Grieve's okay, throwing ability, throwing in. down the middle of the ball. Well, he hadn't really expressed himself in that way right. for most of the first half, so dumping it that long may have caught him off guard. Throwing it short a couple of times. He was on the money there, working on his master's biochemistry degree. Over UC Davis. <laughs> he hate me. Looking for a spot to run behind his offensive line. Led by, among others, the center, a veteran, David Diaz and Fadi, 36, who likes helping the younger guys. England with the tackle. I was one of those guys before, uh, trying to get somewhere, trying to get a chance to play, trying to, you know, kickstart your own career. And I remember being that same guy right there. And, uh, and it's a pleasure for me, as the sun sets on my career, to sunrise on some of the other guys' careers, too. Won a couple of Super Bowls at age 32. The oldest player to ever make his first Dad, NFL start. Thought he was done with football, but could not please resist. Please the please urge to come back and play. With a passion and to help out the younger guy. He hates me that time. Is stopped by Terrence Joseph. A loss of three. Good run support. Don't get in front of me. But that's what I'm talking about, boy. Up on that's that what I'm side, right really there. shut him down. Getting back to Diaz and Fonte, though, you know, that really is indicative of the way I think a lot of guys feel about this. Is not only the older guys who get another chance, but some of these young guys who maybe never would have gotten a chance, but you can see them express themselves. The term chemistry is overused a lot of times, but it really doesn't seem to know where a lot of his receivers are, whether it be by the design of the of the, the routes that they're running or just their ability to break off a route and find open areas. He's not really clicking with these guys. He doesn't even know their first name. Just join the team. <laughs> hey, man, it's hard to use for him when all they have is nicknames on the back. That's right. Ball has to go to the 20. What'd you do? We'll live. What'd no you do? fair catch in the XFL. No, I always got A down. James Hunden at the 15. Trying to break free. And they were all over him. Here at Pac Bell, 
right in the crowd, right below the big Tron. Greg Benervini with Bob Golick. Pretty nice being as huh? close to the Tron, except when the, nobody told us about the, the pyrotechnics, man. Got to be careful here. Wow. For this series, we're going to give you a special look. We're going to just be quiet. Bob, I'm going to put tape on you. Where's that tape? Put that tape on Bob. We're going to listen in to some of the hits, I some of the plays. Right and see what's going on in the field holla, holla. without our interruption. All right, I'll get some coffee. Can you do that? Ready? Hey. Yeah. Here we go. Nice, Please write nice. next zip. Lucky Connie Allen. Ready? some of the sounds of the game and uh, the quarterback lobbing for the call and got it they don't make it on third so it's fourth and one and it's the adventure on fourth down in the xfl no fair catch and it's not a good hang time not the williams leaking free up to the 50 yard line where las vegas seems stuck on starting their drives this is the fifth one today quarterback Mark Green will lead the attack again a week ago. He was in college going on his masters, but he's back on the gridiron. It's a great situation to come and play, and then you know I don't think if it had been a team that's that was 0-3 at this point that I would have come. You know, I mean I uh, you know to jeopardize the program that I was in, you know, to come to a team that doesn't have a chance to win, I wouldn't be worth it for me. Well, so far today for Mr. Green, Mr. Hawks. Student, Mr. Green, Grad Assistant, 6 of 14 for 67 yards. He got a pull. And one beautifully thrown TD. And he ain't been stopped. And perhaps most importantly, Bob, no interceptions. Right. And you see that today, so okay. far, Pulaski's had a pretty good game as the one I see. Three left, Jack. 16, Sally. When you got that many throw, go. so passes thrown, no. though, by Pulaski, no. you can expect a yeah. mistake once in a while. Here we go. Straight left, Jack. 16, Sally, on one. On one. Right? 
Here's Connie for the Demons and Sally here. <laughs> for the Outlaws. And very personal. Flash 324 the last play of the quarter is not incomplete. Three fires, has a receiver, Nelson, down the sideline. They finally knocked him out of bounds with just two seconds to go. Dave Thomas made the hit, but a gain of 17 for the Outlaws, and they are already near field goal range. At the quarter, we got the quarter. Quarter, quarter, quarter. I want to go Frisco left, 50 Nike. So that'll do it for the third quarter. It's a good one for Mark Reeve and the Vegas offense. They lead okay, man. by four after three. Afternoon, to say the least, here at Pac Bell Park. At least they're warmed up for the girls. Trey Wright. No jackets yeah. necessary. Yeah. Look up the mic. Hey, hey, if I don't like it, we're probably going to go Nike, okay? I'll give, you, I'll give you the sign, okay? If they're blitzing, they have six in the box. Here we go. Here we go. Trey Wright. Trey Wright, 10 draw on one. Trey. Great field position again for the Outlaws. Started on, in this quarter in the third at the 41-45 of San Francisco. Now the 50 on this drive as we start the fourth quarter. Well, we heard the word draw. We all know what that is. It's just, it's just obvious as it seems. Didn't fake. Straight over the middle is a call. Oh, the last moment, Besh dropped the ball with pretty good coverage by Dwayne Harper, the veteran cornerback, who is down and hobbled. Pushing and shoving. Oh! One of the players threw the helmet at Lonnie Padalay, number 66 of Las Vegas. I believe it was Abdul Salam Noah, his counterpart on the defensive line. And the fiery tempers, which we saw a lot of in the first yep. half, spilling over here in the second. And then uh, Salam, Abdul Salam Noah came back, took his helmet off, and basically said, you know, I'll go without the helmet. Get off the field, Joe. Get off the field. You don't do it, though. I mean, I don't get it. Every level of football, you do not, you do right, not take, you do not take the helmet off and use it as a weapon. Talked about the injury to Dwayne Harper. He is down. He was re, uh, playing the ball there as the defensive back, the quarterback on the play. 12-year NFL veteran of the Super Bowl with the Niners. Well, he was up there with Brett Beck, and he just, boy, worked hard at it. Stayed up high and kept the ball. Watch what happens here. Oh, we're going to watch the end of the play here where the fight started. I'll have a hard feeling wow. inside. Big right hand there by Noah. Knocked the helmet off of Palale, who's one of 13 kids. All have the middle name Jack. <laughs> this is his dad's name. It's a way to do it if you want to bring everybody at once, that's for sure. Adam Samoa. While the ball was still alive, it was a personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot with an automatic first down. After the play was over, we had several personal fouls against the defense and several personal fouls against the offense. Those penalties offset, it's first down. It's an easy way to hit several. Yes, you know, se right. seven years. Yeah, it's, it's let, me let, let some of these guys know they're awfully close to Alcatraz, aren't we? <laughs> That's right. Just send these guys away for a while. The new XFL uh, penalty booth. Well, right now, the uh, Demons trying to escape from a four-point deficit Harper's okay. in the fourth quarter. And again, the mistakes are hurting yeah. San Francisco. They've turned the ball over three times. If you look at the numbers, you wonder how they're only four points down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Both sides of the ball start to make Double mistakes. Double left, 24, why shallow cross on one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome crowd here at Pac Bell for their second home game on a nice San Francisco day. A little chill of the wind, but that's around the 50s and little rain at the beginning, but that's about it. Big series here for the Outlaws. Grieve looking more and more comfortable. Go from behind. Look out. Hello to the grass here as Eric English says, go back to school. Get one hand on the guy's collar. Yeah. Like that? On a grease collar, just like that. Boy, I wish I could show it out here. We've got a camera here. <laughs> but watch, he's going to be blocked. One hand. Right about the yank the guy down.
Beautiful job defensively. Back was featured in a photo of Sports Illustrated as we get a timeout. He told me his mom taught him values and how to treat people. But what about being featured in a Sports Illustrated picture covering two pages? A pretty nice moment for Eric England and his family. And like you said, um, I had no idea I was going to be on the cover. And, um, I was informed by Mike Preacher that, you know, our own number 80s on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And I was like, yeah, right. I talked to my mom, and she was just, Eric, Eric, guess what? I saw you on in Sports Illustrated. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, yeah, that's nice. You quit playing, Mom. You play with me. So when I saw it, I'm, you know, I was kind of excited about it. So, you know, I bought a couple of copies. Just a couple? Just a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 20. <laughs> Eric England and the receiver James Hunter, who got the cover of that Sports Illustrated, they're still buying them on eBay. <laughs> Why not? We're trying to see how much they're worth. That could be the cover right there. It looks like the same shot. The Bubba Cam in there. And he's letting everybody know about it. Back to the play now. Live action. He hate me in the flat. Good little move. It's over. It's over. It's over. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Stop. Well, England had a, what a great play that was again to the quarterback, dropping him for the loss. There's a situation hey. here on the field where every a couple of yards this way or that way could affect the ability to get a field goal and get those extra three points that might help you. Exactly. Here's a huge play, third and 21. That was two for seven on third down today. Cash is in motion. <laughs> Green throwing end zone and Jenkins going for it. The ball as he fell, I don't think he could have caught up to anyway. He so had it. He just tripped. McCallum will go for the field goal. Yeah, had it. Jim Kleiner thinks he's got the best kicker in the league. Heavy to our side. That side gave us one on one. Well, they got a field goal here coming. The opportunity could give them a chance. McCallum's hit five out of six, including the go by seven. record so yeah. far at 51. So if he makes it here, they go up by seven. This one's a 46-yard attempt for the 27-year-old product of British Columbia. No skates for this Canadian. At the distance. and it keeps it a four-point game. It was off the mark. Thirteen nine. The Outlaws remain in front, but blow another scoring chance. The XFL on TNN, the National Network, is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. By the motor oil that provides maximum protection, Castro GTX, drive hard. And by Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. There aren't many spots around the country that are more scenic and beautiful than San Francisco and the Bay Area, but right now the hometown fans do not like the score. They felt pretty good coming to this game with their demons. Well, they, you know, they they they're, they got to feel a little bit better. Had that field goal gone through, that would have been a seven-point game. Oh. We're talking about a touchdown oh, and the all-elusive extra point, oh, which and, and the XFL oh, average is what about 40 percent? 40 percent. That's it. Milosky looking downtown. Oh, oh. Ball is free. The ball is free. And it's another turnover for San Francisco, and this one caused. Again, by that tough outlaw up front defense. Well, it wasn't that they were quiet in the beginning of the game. They just weren't making the big plays. And the second half, the San Francisco team has done nothing but make mistakes. Adriano Belli comes through the middle, knocks the ball out. Angel Rubio picking it up. Get in possession, and now the outlaws in beautiful position to start up. I mean, I'd love to start drives like this right here. Well, Jim Kreiner was telling me last, last week they got to the quarterback 29 times. They have, I think, 
the best defensive front in the XFL, and you're seeing it here today, putting the pressure on a very savvy quarterback. Flag down, so Glebe just throws it away. You know, so many times, too, Craig, it's not just about getting the quarterback and sacking him. As a defender, when you come out here, getting to the quarterback and just getting a piece of him as he's throwing the ball. Hitting him in the ribs as his arm is going forward. Little things more to remind him psychologically that you're around. That affects his game as much as second, even more than this Holding second. offense number 74, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay, first down. With all the talk, though, about the outlaw right, defense, this don't forget down. about this Dean defense. Jack, they came into the game Otter. third okay. overall. If you don't okay. like your outs, you got your basic. Okay, here we go. Trey left, Jack. 22 Otter. Four turnovers, oh, 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 oh. a plus 10 now for Vegas on the season. They have not turned the ball over yet. However, you can also say they should be leading by a lot more than four points. Breeze is very much in it. Breeze is being hard cut. Reeves passing. Again, came up short. Corey Nelson intended receiver. It appears like the win is coming at the quarterback. He's still got to get the ball to his receiver there. Yeah, it's not that, uh, not that dramatic yet. I mean, the ball should get out there. Hold on, hold on. Mike, what has happened here in the second half? The penalties, turnovers are killing you guys. Yeah, miscues have screwed us. I mean, that's where we're at. We're going to give Pat a chance now. Let's see what he can do. Pat Barnes is the backup quarterback, and it appears from that answer that he might be coming off. Green 15 Hawks! Green 15 Hawks! Well, now you can blame except for the one pick. There's Green firing. Nobody home there. Best was well covered. And, and, and Kevin Case Barnes. And Craig, you're right. From that, from that answer, it sounds like Barnes will be coming in. 25 of 35. 223 yards so far today, one TD, one interception. Yeah, not bad day. But, you know, the first half, remember, this guy is 78% completion. Two strikes. Percentage. 24 rebuff, wide basic. On one. Okay. Certainly couldn't blame him for losing the ball the last series. He was battered by that front Seven. line. Seven. Well, five eight. Three, so in the big Hawks. 20. Three, 15 Hawks. Three pressured. Nicely to Mike Forey to pick up at least a few yards in the play. That's a savvy play by Green, who had two guys right around him. Little earnest. They still took the hit. Didn't get him much yardage. Just still, uh, still in tough situation. We got it. Number 78 is an eligible receiver. Number 50 is an eligible receiver. Kicking team ready to go. Again, they're in the same situation they were. Remember, this team. There's Pat Barnes getting ready to come on. As McCallum attempts a 44 yard of the winners coming at him. His last seemed to blow right to the right. He had the distance. Remember, makes it a seven point game yeah. as he goes through. And that's what he's got for 40 yeah, minutes. So Paul McCallum hits the field goal and now. The Outlaws lead by seven. It appears we'll have a new quarterback when the Demons come back on offense. But. Try to think of us as the Oscars, only we don't. The fiery Tommy Maddox orchestrated another dramatic fourth quarter comeback. LA's third consecutive game decided on the last play. This week, will the field general continue his heroics? Or will Memphis's Rashawn Salam go maniac in L.A.? Rashawn Salam! Touchdown! The Memphis Maniac. The L.A. Extreme. The XFL. Tonight on UPN. Pretty good numbers today. 25 to 35. But you're electing to go with Pat Barnes here. Hey, listen. We're going to have the luxury of having two outstanding quarterbacks, okay? And we just want to get a spark here and see if the changeup does it. I mean, the quarterback gets a lot of the blame, a lot of the credit, and there's no way we're putting the blame on Mike Pilarski. It's just, say, we want to just see if we can get sparked up here and get rolling. I mean, we're kind of stumbling overall as an offense, and we just want to see the trigger mag and change it up a little bit. Try the short pooch kick. And it's taken in by O'Donnell. And he brings it up to the 35-yard line. And there you see Pat Barnes got coming on the, okay. on the field. Hey, and he mentioned Sparks, Craig. Lucky Connie, next post. All right, here we go. Listen up. Listen. We fight nasty. X-Mo. 64 
Connie, ex post. I'm one, ready? Connie. Sound a little injured, a little unsure in his first time, but. Uh, outside, outside! Uh, a coach sometimes ball, just looks for a spark, somebody who oh, can just 18. make something happen, maybe a different read for the defense. Read 18, we'll see if it back. works out. Certainly a questionable call if it doesn't work out for Jim Stripper. He goes Barnes is going to take off a dive and take the hit from Kurt Cobain, who would not give him the freebie. Now, Pat Barnes is a terrific quarterback, and certainly Jim Kreider, the coach of Las Vegas, saw him up close and personal because in the world in New York, he led Frankfurt to the world title in 99. He says that he thinks Barnes could start for any team in the XFL. Gunner, 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 Gunner! Barnes used to following Pulaski. He graduated from the same college five years later at Cal. Yeah, that's a hit! That's a hit! Johnson for a couple of yards. That's a hit! Man, now that was a hit. There was a hit. A little more shoving going on. Let's go! You take a look there, Travis you know, as, as, as a defense, though, sometimes hey, when you see a new quarterback come in, it changes the dynamic of the offense a little bit. The way he drops, the way he rolls out. Maybe he doesn't stay in the pocket. Period. Everybody got that? Smith, what we're doing? What we got? We're doing. about a quarter of a football shy on a third and inches. I mean, excuse me, guys. Say what, there's a hell of a hit to stop him, too. How about this we decision? Right in wedge. Okay, here we go. Hold right here. Who's holding right here? Hold right here. The point in Pat Barnes, we have the best quarterback set quick, number right? wise in the league. In wedge out of Queens, right nasty, all right? Okay. Queens right nasty, 10 wedge, first son, ready? I gotta believe he's calling his own number on this one. Jim told me that Pat took only a quarter of the snaps this week. Big play here on third and about six inches. On the keeper, that'll be enough. He got to the 45. It's a little dangerous putting the ball out there. It's not a goal line. But it worked out. That's true. As they want. Mike Pulaski, as he uh, gets his much-deserved rest, and I just I just hope that, that people realize right, that his numbers, he's not out for any other reason. Queens left than nasty. To find run. That chemistry that they, maybe that, 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 that they, they lost in the, first, uh, in the, the third quarter when they came back from halftime. But do you take your first-string quarterback out, the guy that can take him over the snaps? You know, the when focus you're trying is, to win a game. The focus has been on. I mean, they've been making mistakes both sides of the ball. I don't know. Barnes throws. He has Travis Moore for his first catch of the game. A gain of three. Just picked up a and week know, and a half ago. Great receiver out of the CFL. And you know what? It's not just about the guy's ability. Sometimes when I've played against teams who put in quarterbacks who would never start in your life unless he's the last guy healthy, and still there's something about that change that makes you just feel different, and it, and it sparks that offense. So regardless of what the motive, what what his talent level is, this is something that can motivate him. Green 18! Green 18! Second down and eight. The Jet Cunningham's got it. Couldn't use his speed that time. He was crushed by Kelly Erndon. A loss of one yard on the play. Good coverage again by this Vegas D. And it's up close and personal. They hit hard, and they make you earn every yard. Got a flag down to the far Push side of the back, field. Man. Push them back. Push them back. Push them back. Push them back. Not enough men on the line we'll of scrimmage. Back now you'll be... Uh, Third and eight, well, they right? stopped him at one. They're better off just taking the play there instead of the penalty. Illegal formation. Number 74 was an ineligible receiver, and he lined up on the end of the line. That penalty is declined. Third down. Let's go. Let's go. Trio right. Third and seven. It looks like feedback obviously is hurt. Brandon Sandy. <laughs> One of the leaders in the defensive backfield. Koloski was 5 out of 10 on third down. Let's see how Barnes does. Brown 18. Barnes looking right. Barnes going down the middle. Has Hudson there. Oh, good defensive play by Jamel Williams. Check that. Looked like Hurley Tarver in the play. And on third and seven, 
Now fourth and seven, and San Francisco will have to punt. Man, Tarver could not have played that any more beautifully. He timed it up so nicely in his coverage. They're making a play for the ball. Watch him come right in front of the last second. Ball has to get to the 29 to be a live ball after 25 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the big hang time. No fair catch in the XFL. Look at it. It's a free ball. They may not have given him the danger zone, though. As it's recovered by Lee Cole, they may not have given him the danger zone. And that would be a horrible penalty for San Francisco if oh, that is the fact because the ball oh, didn't wasn't even caught. Yeah, it wasn't even there was, there was no no room any, at all. The receiver couldn't even couldn't even move. He has surrounded by so many people. Now once the ball hits the ground, it is live, but oh, you do have ground. to allow him to catch it. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, violation Ooh. of the five yard radius. Five yards will be assessed from the spot of the foul. The ball belongs to Las Vegas. First down. Let's see. that call Bob he He's could have moved up he had plenty of room to catch the ball there was guys in front of him. I, I I'm going with the call on that one he had people all around him but the five yards is more about it's mostly about impeding the guy's ability to get to the ball there were guys like one yard in front of him until the last second they're on the side then, no the guy one guy came up the middle you can't That's stand there in the, in the last second move away it's about the whole time you can't violate that circle at any time before the ball comes in or people will be standing in your face and then backing up yeah. the last second. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. I think that call could have been either way. 16 Sally on one. On one. Right. Great yeah. court on. Vegas takes over. Green 15 Hawks! Green 15 Hawks! Rod Smart. I mean, it's sort of an easy way out for a guy to avoid catching the ball if he's going to get those calls. He didn't even move away. He's four yards away from the ball. Yeah, but I mean, do you, do you really want to take the chance of not fielding a ball and hoping that there's nobody, that, that somebody's violating your space? Yeah, here we go. Uh -oh. I mean, if you let it go and there, in the rest says there isn't anybody, then you're right. Then you're dead man. You're right, but he was, he was himself good four yards. Queen, Queen, Queen. Just right. Queen. Five, eight. Oh, no, no, no. Right, triple. Purple 19 Hawks! Purple 19 Hawks! He ate me. Flag down to the play. He got a few yards. He hit me across the 30 yard line. We're not getting much out of Rod now. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, we got hold it. Come back, you don't look so hot. You going back in? Oh yeah, most definitely, man. There's nothing that's gonna keep me out of this, please believe. Uh, we just uh, got hit uh, below below the belt. You know, take a five minute break and we, we back in it. You know? What happened to your head? I have no idea. I'm not really even worried about it. I'm ready to go. That's Brandon Sanders. Hard hitter loves to compete. In fact, he says he'll tell the other guys who worry about the interceptions. He likes to go for the hit. Backside Number 64 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay, second down. Hey, <laughs> Let's take a look at Brandon Sanders. Stitching him up here, closing his gash on the top of his head. And he also said he took a shot. He took a shot a little south of the border also. I think that's the one that's bothering him more than a couple of stitches in the head. It's a little uh, south pole, north pole. For Glebe to Furry, he connected with him earlier for the touchdown, a gain of 17. No anesthetics on that stitch. Look at little. Well, I think he already got dinged. I think he was already knocked out from, from when he got the cut. So they said, "Do you feel this?" Yeah, man. And then they said, "Hurry, come on, let's go." <laughs> Maybe you're right. Two straight short, 22 Chicago on one. On one, right?
thought that a lot smart going into that. I mean, you kind of you kind of felt if you were an outlaw fan that you would go with the guy who kind of brought you to the dance. The first half it was all smart. Next time we get it. Second half on the ground, four carries, one yard. They're shutting him down, and that pass, obviously, the reception, I should say, kind of indicative of the way his second half's been going. Adventure, fourth down, XFL. McCallum gets it off, a good boomer. Hudson will catch. Whoa! Had some problems with his partner over there, Terrell Sutton. The ball now gathered in by Sutton, and he stops at the 36. Sutton's got to move out of the way there and let the top pump returner take it back. Man. The Las Vegas Extreme will hope to be on the same page when they host the X of Memphis tonight on UPN coming up at 7 o'clock, 4 o'clock Pacific. With Sean Salam trying to lead the X back to 500. Why the Extreme looks to go to 3 and 1 and tie for first with the winner of our game. Tommy Maddox has been a tough guy to deal with. The Extreme 2 and 1. The X 1 and 2 next from L.A. on UPN with Chris Marlowe and Brian Bosworth. I talked to Tommy Maddox on Friday, and he is just hes just so jazzed about that football team in Los Angeles. He said he likes what they got, the balance of the run and the pass. He feels that they got a good shot at it, and obviously they've got a, even though they're getting ready for a game, you know they got an eye on what's going on here. That's a big game in a 10-game season. The top four teams in the league make the playoffs. Top two in the East, top two in the West. B-Mac is back in as... Run the interview with Lee Raymond. Round 19. A couple of stitches not going to knock him out. Barnes is back in as well. Look out. Picked off. Picked off. It was intended for Moore. And it was picked off. Picked off. off. Jimmy Hurley Tarver and Barnes makes the big miscue. I was about to tell you, Craig, there's four minutes left in the game, and the Demons have to go 76 yards for a touchdown. But I said, you know what? I'll I'll tell them that next play. And now it's a moot point. They just sat down. Well, what's and not a moot point is the decision that the coach made, Jim Skipper, to bring in Barnes. For Mike Pulaski, who's having a pretty effective day, yeah. albeit he's trying to give him a spark, but still, you have the top quarterback in the league, and uh, the Demons have turned the ball over now in the game six times. Good job. Good job. Good job. Now, some of the fans upset. Pat, can we grab you real quick? Pat, I guess he's not talking, guys. Pat Barnes walk, walking away. It is first XFL action, perhaps not used to the, the sideline okay. Here we go. antics. Double right, 96 slant on one. On one three. Well, those demon quarterbacks, problems all day, two INTs, a few fumbles, three fumbles. Been the turnovers are really taking the game out of their hands. Bill goes to put it away here for Las Vegas. He ain't me. Oh, nice grab from behind, <laughs> and he stopped. Hurley Tarver, once again, a big play. What is the magic behind this Outlaws defense? Well, you know, I just got a good read on the quarterback and got my hat to the receiver and made a good play. And I'm sure you knew he was fresh in the game, didn't you? Oh, yeah, we knew that, but I was expecting him to run, but I'm glad he threw it. <laughs> Las Vegas now with 12. They came in a plus sure, six. They're sure, plus sure. six in this game alone. Yeah, yet they're still the only up by a touchdown. The to the to get a D stop with the clock going down to the warning. And they'll have a shot. They've got all three timeouts. Mm -hmm. But as you said earlier, it may come down to that conversion, <laughs> even if they can get the tying score. Exactly. Well, Rod Smart's going to be the key to the Vegas success. Here, if they can just give the ball to him, get the first down, try to keep the clock moving, on, get it over with, they can win this. Two-minute warning. Oh, yeah. Outlaws by seven. Huh? On that last slam, you can hit it. Outlaws looking to go to their third win in four games this year for the emotional head coach for Las Vegas. Lonnie! What the hell are you doing? Lonnie! Get your ass off the field! What are you doing? <laughs> hey guys, we got to be smart enough not to get involved in any crap, understand? Okay, we can win this football game if we don't take ourselves out of it, okay? 
Jim Kreiner enjoyed some terrific success in NFL Europe, but he came here despite saying he's the only old fart in the group, as he told me, among the coaches, because among the coaches, his son, Mark's defensive coordinator, his nephew, Scott, is the wide receiver coach. That was one of the reasons he came back for this challenge of the XFL. Nepotism is alive and well. Black, oh, big hit! Dave Thomas, the running backer. Yeah. Yeah. Is he working? Yeah. Craig Powell, actually. I'm sorry, Craig Powell. Powell. What a shot. He timed that up so nicely. Grief just did not have an opportunity. Hey, coming at Watson, you're going to see it from Grief's standpoint. Oh. <laughs> So now they're going to have to give the ball up. Don't give him a chance for a return. Now. On fourth down. Him a for return. But Chris, why, why aren't you just you giving it to, okay. to Rod Smart? Yeah, yeah, I know it was. Keep the There's clock no running. Back. Right. Get the what first he, down. What, he lost it. Guy came. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it. Are you hot on Sam? San Francisco. Are you hot on Sam? No. And this is saying a lot. If they're efficient here and can hold on to the ball, we'll get a chance at least at the outlaw. Hunted is back at the goal line. Didn't want him to return it. We may get a chance. Hunted, good coverage, flag of the play. And that'll be costly if it's against the outlaws because instead of having him hold up at about the eight, it could be up the field. We'll see. Mark Green, tough afternoon all around. And that last one, you just took a shot, my friend. Yeah, that was a good hit. Uh, you know, I just want to say our defense played a heck of a game. They kept us in this thing. And, uh, you know, fortunately, our offense made enough plays to get it done. You're still not having second guesses about that choice to leave Stanford last week? Well, uh, maybe a little bit after that last hit, but uh, no. <laughs> Rock Green is having a good day. He was not asked to win the game. He's done enough at least to give the Outlaws a chance here. The penalty was holding on the Demons, so it backs them up a few yards back to the four. They're going to have to go 96 yards. Bob against a team that has done what? Against a defense that has allowed one TD in 15, over 15 quarters of play this year. With a quarterback who stole the ball. A total of what? Two, three times? He's completed as many passes to the other team as after his own yep. team. And Barnes is in the end zone. Firing over the head, incomplete. He was looking for Travis Moore. Well, Jim Skipper wanted to be in the hot seat as the head coach, and he certainly made an interesting decision here, bringing in Barnes instead of a Pulaski, who was 25 for 35. Barnes threw the pick in his second series. Okay. Expos. Trio right. Trio right. 50 Ohio. Expos on one, ready? A lot of pressure on Barnes' shoulder. Go, A heralded quarterback, though. This is not a number two guy by any means. Barnes looking for a receiver over the middle. Pretty good coverage on Travis Moore. Incomplete, and it was BMAC. Brandon Sanders with a nice defensive play. Moore might have been able to shoot the gun for it. Come on, come on. What is it? Here we go. Again? Here we go. Quads right. I would think two down territory or not. Well, 129, you have all your timeouts. Incomplete, you fun or not? Go, 318. We'll see. 318. Big third Stop. down. Barnes firing. Oh, good reception by Hunted. That's a first down. Huge play by Hunted. Great OG. hands. OG. OG. They're going to go, they're gonna go no huddle. They're going to go out of the screen. Gets him out of the shadow of that goal line, which, uh, which really makes it tough for you to make run out all your plays. Gunner, gunner, you got two timeouts left for go. the Demons. Stand up. Barnes now, down the middle, no. He was looking for cutting and could not get a step on the speedy Hurley Tarver, who has had a heck of a game. Problem is, Cunningham ran behind him, was running with him, and just felt like, well, I can't get away Come from on. him. Didn't even try to break away. Go, go, Grimes is running it anyway. Okay, here we go. Give me 65 pilot. Here we go, quickly, quickly. Here we go. 
Doubles right. 65 pilot. You got a hook. Went inside. Here we go. One on one. Out. Chicago. Two timeouts left for the Demons. Second and ten. Orange came on with it. For the starter. Here in the second half. Oh, right ball. Oh. Incomplete. Warren was covered. He's having all kinds of problems finding his receiver. He was in traffic again. By the tough Las Vegas D with Andreano Abelli. Okay. So we got to win all the outs. Come on, baby. All right, here we go. Oh, Trio left. Lucky up, Cato out. I'm wondering. <laughs> They hit the third and ten last time, Bob. Now they're in the 20 save right, situation. And they do. With a minute left, just over a minute, they've got to get outside and get out of bounds off the clock. Miami, Miami. Round 19. Stop. Barnes again. Forced backward. Look out. He got away. Still no receiver open, though. He fires it downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. He did avoid taking the sack and a loss of about six. Timeout. But it brings up the play of the game for the Demons. You got that? I don't know if he really saw any receivers there. I think he just avoided Didn't the want to exactly. Got rid of the sack. There's a couple of guys out there. Might have been able to make a play. Had he been able to get a sound throw off. But he was being, he was being jostled and pulled down as he threw it. So he just kind of floated out there. I didn't see a receiver open. Despite all the time, you would figure there might be somebody open. I only saw two I saw guys Travis out there. And they were both well covered. Hey, what do you think you about know, Ryder right now? And they had to, they uh, had to call the timeout. He's got to catch his uh, breath. Uh, yeah, if I tell James to keep flying like Jim. One play right now. Yeah. Just yeah. You're going to keep them out of that cover, too, to get that one look. Yeah, okay. Hey, let's go to doubles, okay? And let's go to, uh, oh, no. you want Jim near. You know what I mean? Huh? Let's go Jim with a mirror. Okay, okay, yeah, I like it. Okay, let's go doubles. So I'm giving you some time, okay? All right, okay, here we go. You do have an out. Yeah, you do. It's the hitch in the out. Fourth down and 10. Pilot. Their own 20 yard line, 54 seconds left in the game. It ain't a pretty sight. Well, Pat Barnes, 25 years of age out of California. Took over for the starter, Pulaski. We got double play. Uh, you could call a controversial decision. Jin Mir. Skipper wanted to change right. their spark in there. Brought Barnes on huh? here in the fourth quarter. Second series, he threw a pick. Now he's has to lead his team downfield. Yeah, here we go. Double right. left, 65, Jin Mir. I'm wondering. 65. It's fourth and ten, and it's down to this for the Demons. Move, move. Who do have two. Oh, oh, oh. One, actually, one timeout remaining. Round 19, stop! Oh, oh. Oh. The firing oh. over the middle, oh. incomplete! Oh. Now, Hunden said he was held, and he did not get a call. Now, oh. that's not P.I. Anyone? 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 You know, they didn't even be sitting back. Everybody was essentially had two people covering them. That's the Vegas B, though, Bob. They yeah. pressured the quarterback. We've been talking so much about the quarterback and the pressure being on them, but really the offensive Pat. line has got to hold up, too, with the defensive it's line. It's the shooters themselves for Vegas today. You know, and there's, a, there's, this, there's this relationship between the guys up front rushing and the coverage people. If you, can, if you have the talent in your up front rushers where you can send three, four guys, what? you got Pick more people to cover, man, you're in beautiful shape. Some yeah. teams don't have that. They got a blitz, they got a zone blitz, they got to try different things. This, uh, this uh, outlaw defense really sets up a lot of things for itself. Mark Grieve, working on his master's in education over at Stanford, got a call about a week and a half ago from his head coach back in the NFL Europe, Jim Kreiner, said, Mark, I've called you a couple of times. I keep calling you. I need you now. I've lost three quarterbacks. Will you come back? He talked to his family. He talked to his professors. And they said, we can work it out with your masters. You can still get this degree. Go back and play some football. Win a game. And he did just that today. Threw the touchdown here in the second half to Curry. And the Las Vegas Outlaws with a terrific victory on the road to take over first place in the Western Division at 3-1. And, and, and if you look at the two quarterbacks, Pulaski certainly had the numbers, 25-35 for 223. 
Yeah, one TD, right, but what about Grieb? Only 11 for 22, 106. <laughs> but he got the game. He Good won the job. game. He's trying to throw me one, man. Yeah. Coach, today penalties, turnovers really killed you guys. Right, you know, outside of the score itself, turnovers is the next major factor in any football game. And we, you know, turnovers just bit up and, and bite us on the tail of the day. And uh, in a game like this, because it was going to be a very close game, nip and tuck, and so whoever made the most mistakes was going to come out on the on the uh, losing end of it, which was our case. You made a quarterback change, Jay. Do you go back to Pulaski next week? Yeah, Pulaski's the quarterback. There's no quarter quarterback controversy. We just wanted to put Pat in there and see if we get sparked. You know, it was a situation where the whole offense was out of sync, so maybe you think if you switched a uh, quarterback that might have just get us out of that funk zone we were in. So, I mean, Mike is the quarterback. He's played great for us, so we don't just jump ship on the guy just because he uh, kind of struggled a little bit. But I think it was an entire offense, and it's not entirely the quarterback. But in this business, they get too much credit, too much blame. So Pulaski's our quarterback. BMAC, you're bleeding from the head. You got hit downtown. You got an interception. When are you and this defense going to run out of gas, my friend? Hey, man, we just treat trying to play ball, do what we need to do. I'm kind of glad they got that score so that's not hanging off our heads. And, uh, hey, you know, underdig this, we're in the yay area, and we're playing ball. That's what I'm talking about. Now, new quarterback this week didn't do too well. Next week, do you expect more out of him after one game under his belt? Well, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. He got a chance to get in the fire, get some tackles, uh, you know, get hit upside his head. He'll be better. And, and we'll be better as a team. That's that's what we need, man. We need a game, a gut fight like this. This was gut check. All right, buddy. Get, get a shower and clean your head off. <laughs> hey, Mark, you only get a few days of practice, then you come out and get a win. How does it feel? It feels great. You know, I think, uh, you know, the defense played great today, and it was it was rocky on offense, and, you know, I, I you know, didn't know what was going to happen. And, but, you know, we made enough plays to win the game and, and let, our, let our defense do what they do best. All right, Mark. Well, Mark Grieve had uh, quite a good game. I have to disagree with Lee. Not uh, incredible numbers, but did enough. And the right. big thing, did not turn the ball over, Bob. Exactly. No interception, and he threw the big touchdown. You know, 106 yards passing is not a great quarterback number. But Rod Smart was, remember, he dominated the first half for them in the run game. That's where the, the way their offense ran. And, but Grieve stepped up when they needed, especially on that touchdown, which really... I don't want to say it broke the backs of the Demons, but it certainly put the Demons in a position of having to make it to play comeback. Still, when the Demons look at this game, despite the quarterback situation, it was six turnovers by them. And they shot themselves in the foot time and time again, not to mention 11 penalties, and they came up short 16 to 9 in their quest to take over the Western Division. So a big road win for Vegas. The Outlaws continue their road swing. The start of a three-game trip next week. And we'll be there in Chicago. But from San Francisco, a start of a three-game stand. Birmingham, New York in next. Vegas off to Chicago, where they are struggling in the Windy City. Yeah, they're looking for uh, they're looking for a little love back there in the Windy City. And uh, they've got some talent. We've seen their talent. We'll find out if they can uh, turn it into a win. Tell him he's nothing if he got zero in the win column. He hate me getting his first touchdown of his XFL career today. It was a solid game, and again, the turnovers, the factor. Las Vegas continues to lead the league now with a plus 12 turnover ratio as they move to 3-1 and one on the season. Once again, the final score, the Outlaws winning 16-9. More XFL action next on UPN. Memphis and L.A. for Bob Golick, Kip Lewis, Lee Rearman, Craig Minervini. So long from San Francisco. This is the XFL.